I want to let you know that uh, today's episode is brought to you by Liquid Death. It's uh, mountain water. It's good. Today's episode is brought to you by Magic Mind. It is the anti-procrastination beverage. Uh, um, if you uh, you want to get in flow state, go on and get into it. They can help. MagicMind.co, promo code Theo for 10% off. Today's guest uh, is a friend of mine, and he has a new special uh, that will be March 4th live. The Jump Cut special, you can get tickets on his website, joshwolf.com. Uh, today's guest is comedian Josh Wolf. You know what's crazy is that like when you go on tours like that you know you you don't think you're any different from the first day to the last but like when you get off the road for a week you're like oh sh- sh- who was that dude at the yeah. end of that you know what i mean like you slowly morph into beth always tells me she's like i i don't really like you after those long she's yeah like, you're a different person because you're used to doing everything that you want at the whim when you want to do it, you're living on your time with your vibe. Yeah. And you come home and you fuck it up. You get like, you got responsibility, but like also there's other people in your world now. Yeah. Who expect things from you, but you are so used to on the road, everything you want to do when you want to do it is when it happens. Yeah. I think, you know, be, yeah, I think being on the road, honestly, I just realized is probably the most organized time of my life. Like I am on, or I'm almost, grateful sometimes that there's the road because it's like then i know a place i have to be i mm-hmm. have some a little bit more responsibility you know there's no doubt this quarantine has done a couple things for me one it has highlighted that i'm not as mentally i'm not emotionally in as good a shape as i thought i was dang because i've had more time with my own brain Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean it hasn't been like the road had me on a schedule oh yeah the road it offers a lot of get out of jail free cards it's like oh shit's bad at the house yeah (laughs) i'll be in cedar rapids (laughs) (laughs) you want to go to des moines this weekend i do (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh this relationship's falling apart oh well i'm in buffalo thursday through sunday it's true (laughs) yeah but also like with more time to be introspective I realized, oh, some of those things, because of my schedule has been so hectic, some of the, my, sh- some of my shortcomings I've really covered up. Really? With, yeah, man, yeah. One thing that this year has shown me, like, because I will tell you, I'm at the same time mentally healthier than I've ever been, but also unhealthier because I've, I've really sat with myself. Mm. So I've peeled back more layers, which feels healthy, but then I'm peeling shit back and being like, oh, you're yeah. fucked up. This onion's dirty. Yeah, yeah. This onion needs to be washed. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like this layer. This onion has tears in it. (laughs) (laughs) It looks like people have been crying on this onion. (laughs) What? Yeah. It so but it's been it's been interesting, man. You know, it's been interesting. The one thing I've discovered the most, dude, is that a lot of times the happier I appear, it's a it's me covering up for something. Oh, dang. Because I'm a super happy, optimistic dude, right? Yeah, you always seem like the happiest dude. And so what I've looked at is sometimes when I'm really doubting myself or really struggling with something personally, I'm extra happy. Now, I'm, I am an optimistic dude, and by nature, I, I like lifting people up. Like, I think the more successful all of us are, the, more, the better it is for everybody, like all that shit. But there's some times where I put on that face when inside I'm like... The more I hate myself, the happier I am to other people. Really? It's what I've just found over quarantine, dude. It's been bananas. Really. Damn, that's interesting, man. I'm trying to think about that as you say it. Like, I wonder if I, the more I hate myself, the happier I am to other people. It's my defense mechanism. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, I I can, 
I, I can't know. I, I didn't know that, but you you always seem like you know you're always usually like really affable and you know friendly guy. Um, what's your but like what, what's your like when you are in a bad spot? So some people disappear. They were they remove themselves from other people, right? Yeah. That's their defense. Like I I'm, I have a family member that like when they disappear, I'm like oh they're something bad's happening. Yeah, do you know? Um, but it's the opposite for me. I want to show you how well I am. So I'm, Dang. I'm in front of your face showing wow. you how good I am. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's interesting, man. I wonder what, I wonder what way I am. I think, I don't know. I, I feel like I'll probably be, I'll get more down in the dumps probably, you know, or I'll get, I definitely get angry. Like if things aren't going good, I'll get, uh, I've found recently in this past year, definitely anger is something that I've had to deal with more than ever. Do you do you find yourself like can you when you get really mad at like inanimate objects or the GPS oh, you're yeah. like oh yeah the things like when yeah. you're screaming in your car at the GPS oh yeah when this bitch is gonna die it's, <laughs> like, it's just like the laundry room door yeah 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 hey. yeah, yeah all right motherfucker I'll say things like that to it like it's been building up its plan against me and it just got finally edged me again as finally you guys are about you and the door are gonna have yeah. it out once and for all i can kind of understand that video where the guy just throws that screen out into his yard you know when they have that video can you find that sean also that one that you know one of my favorites is that dude that the DoorDash or the grub hub dude who goes walking up the steps and he slips with all of his food that oh. he was delivering and then he just picks up the cup and throws it at the house just for you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's already empty but he's just he wants one last he's got one last hurrah yeah right? he wants to get it that's in there. it right there so i'm gonna click on that yeah this yeah this is this is one of my favorites yeah he's been working all day because also we There's this kid looking at him oh dad's a hero and he's like, this, I can't even get back in. <laughs> it's hot out there. What's he thinking right now? Okay. I'm gonna. She wants me to fix this shit? He's he's doing his best to keep it under control right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. What the hell? Hey. Praise God, baby. Yeah, let me tell you my favorite part about that. Yeah. I like seeing angry dude lift shit above his head before yeah. he breaks it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he, ooh, that that is an angry movement right there. When it's you, such a caveman move. Yeah, and and you know what? Like, he really wanted to. I'm sure when he looks back at this video, he's not gonna like the way he looked. Yeah. I'm sure he wanted to look smoother. Yeah. When he was wrecking it, <laughs> or when he was throwing it off the, you know, none of it looked great. You know. No, it'll make him probably. I bet. I would. I wonder where that guy is now. Like, did he get into CrossFit? Did he get into yoga? Did he get into? Did he start a screen? Nowadays, you could take a viral video, and literally start a screen door throwing competition. Yeah. So or maybe throw the screen. Maybe that child is so embarrassed of his father. He's like, I'm gonna work out for the rest of my life. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe that kid looks at that video a couple times and is like, look at this. Look at this. He couldn't even smush a screen door. This Homer Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know what? That screen door. The only thing more frustrating to me, besides not being able to put it up, is you know the when you had the headphones that had the wire, mm -hmm. and you would knock the. You would knock it and pull the earbuds out of your ear. Mm -hmm. Nothing made me want to strangle another human oh. more, especially at the gym. Yeah. When you're working out and you just knock it and both of them fall out of your ears, you're like, because at the gym, I don't like, I don't know about you. I need to find uh, motivation. So I'll pick one person to hate at oh. the gym. I'll pick out their shorts. Like, I fucking hate oh, those shorts. Fucking Alan. Yeah, yeah Al, like Alan. Like, Alan's wearing Asics. Oh, Fuck Alan, you know? Look at this hoe, yeah. And, and I'll just stare at Alan the whole time. I've Damn. had a guy walk up to me like, do we have a problem? I'm like, nah, I'm sorry. I just, I had to, I picked somebody to hate yeah. when I uh, live. That's interesting to really have like a, um, like an adversary, I guess. Like a motivation. Like, like why, why is he wearing jeans and a wife beater? And, and you know, the, like, uh, like it's an outfit. Like he's wearing acid wash jeans and boots and a wife beater at the gym and he's doing yeah. pull-ups and you're like that's a lot i fucking hate this i don't yeah yeah i think uh, i'm trying to think of if i'm at the gym man i think i used to feel more competitive at the gym now i'm just like i'm just happy to be in the gym like um yeah i don't do as much weights these right now so i'm just doing more yoga and stuff but i guess i feel like when i'm in there 
Um, I try to look at the chicks, but a lot of chicks now that everybody wears headphones now, so you can't talk to any chicks. Yeah. Uh, so then also if you get recognized, it's always by dudes. So it's like, you end up having to talk to a bunch of dudes the whole time, you know, which is great, Yeah, but it's not yeah. chicks. No, no. You know? And y- you know, like I don't want, I hate it when people stand around and they'll watch you do your set waiting to talk to you you're like oh man yeah, i'm having a hard time working out with you just staring at me bro you yeah. know what i mean like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. can you maybe we can meet up the worst is the is the i didn't want to bother you like they walk you follow you in the locker room i didn't want to bother you during your workout so you thought dick in hand was a better yeah this is a good time this, <laughs> this is a better time to jump in dick some guy in hand? sat next to me at a restaurant the other day and sat right and he talked he tried nine different ways to talk to me man and finally i just said hey man i'm just trying to watch some bass i'm just trying to watch a basketball yeah. and chat with my friend i had to just it was just too much man he was just and I, he was pouring out his life story it was yeah. just really sad and like i get it sometimes but this dude was also pretty wasted i think so that makes it tougher I I am not one of those dudes that like I think you talking to me comes with the job. I think like if you see me out, especially us, it's different, man. I think if you're Tom Cruise, right? Tom Cruise is on a big screen. So the difference between seeing Tom Cruise, he's a movie star. You leave your house to go into a dark room. So if you see Tom Cruise at the airport, you're like, there's Tom Cruise. But right. you're not gonna go up and talk to him. Because he, he doesn't play Tom Cruise, he plays all those different roles. You're Theo Vaughn. Yeah. You talk about your personal shit. So they feel like they know, like you're. Oh, right. Do you know yeah. what I mean? They have an attachment to you that they don't have to Tom Cruise. Right. So I get it when people come up at the bar or come up because they already feel like, oh, I know that dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I totally get it. Yeah, podcast li- podcast listeners and podcasters and everybody, there's definitely more of like a family sense kind yeah, of. Or, I think or so. Relation sense. The thing is, this guy that I ran into, I don't think he knew me. I think he was just a <laughs> drunk guy. You could literally see that he went from person to yeah. person and people just kept sending him away. He's like, everybody I know died in a car accident. And I'm like, oh. And you were like, how'd you get out? Like, <laughs> I'm like I bet they just told you that, bro. I bet they are yeah. living happily you, in Utah Have you right tried now. their numbers? Because I think they still work. Yeah. I had a dude tell me once, he... um had a couple missing teeth Mm -hmm. and he goes i lost my teeth because my daddy ran over me with a tractor when i was six and i was like what (laughs) and basically i was like well i'm gonna have to need this is a story i do need to hear you know (laughs) i'm so glad but like one of the things that i do love also is i really love weird shit and the people who follow me know the one thing i do love is people share their weird stories and their weird pictures and their weird videos with me Mm -hmm. that is something i can't get enough of I, i just looked Yo, I just looked at a bunch this morning that people sent to me. I wake up every morning like, oh my God. Is any of it on your story or anything? Uh, I just posted one on my uh, Facebook page about this dude, and I have to f- post the follow-up videos. This dude, the, his he had a growth in his earlobe. Ooh. ooh. And um, I That's just- That's a genetic thing, usually. Well, no, this was a- what is it, like a seed like that something they planted in his ear it looked man it looked like like there was going to be a palm tree like the, it looked like well you know if you bury some seed under your skin it will actually sprout isn't that crazy what here go down a little down down further 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 there's me further? keep going further further keep going mm, sorry maybe one more that's jacob wolf maybe one more oh maybe i don't know how far down that was the guy who posts on my page apparently Maybe what? he posted it. Uh, look at that. Oh, damn, is that you? Yeah, what do you think about that, dude? <laughs> That's my first headshot. Ever. First headshot ever. Wow. What do you think about that one, man? As That's... long as we got <laughs> each other. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm... We if, got the world. Why didn't I get it? On, that's an 80s sitcom. Like, that's Kirk Cameron. When was that, do you think? I can tell you exactly when that was, dude. That is 19... 19- 93 there we go let's um, go it's 1993 wow. the guy who took that picture theo so i went up this was a gay I, man oh yeah it always is look i'll tell you this and this is a like get wanting photos in los angeles is a gateway drug to homosexuality man it's basically yeah it, it dude this but this dude was like hey you know i came into his house and we took a couple pictures and what he does was, his name start with Oh, do you remember? 93. Oh, well, I'm sure there's only, I feel like it's the same guy. It's so long ago. Okay. I don't remember. I would have to look, but I know that he was like, hey, I have some, 
He was wearing a robe when I showed mm-hmm. up. Oh, damn. And um, I'd always heard the robe stories. Mm-hmm. And I might tell you, part of me was like, man, how come I've never been robed before? Like, what's wrong with me? Like, Oh, yeah, I think that a lot. I've never had a stalker. Like, I've never had a female stalker. Like, it's like, okay, damn. Yeah. All I, right. I've had one. Her, She goes by the name Sandy Wang. Um, She has a website out about me. No way. Yeah, I think it's sandywang.net. And... um. But I, I can show you, I have about 5,000, there it is. Yeah. That's her, this is her artwork. Okay, so this is how I got put into this. Ready this for this? This is good art. So I'm out at a dog park in LA, dude. That's not that good. And this woman was walking her chihuahua, and I had my dog at the time, and mm-hmm. she said, can we take a little walk around? I had met her a couple times, and she seemed normal. And I was walking with a buddy of mine. And what kind of lady? White lady? Black? Asian, little Asian woman. And... um. We take one lap around the park, and she said, uh, "You know, the twin towers exploded because the government found a video of me masturbating in my living room." And I was like, "Oh!" Now my friend was like, "Hey, I'm out." Yeah. But I'm like, "I'm in." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she <laughs> said, <laughs> "She said, will you go to my website here and look at my art?" I'm like, "Yeah, let's see how." She also has a website de- basically dedicated to a conspiracy theory about me. Dang. And um, so she ended up going to jail, dude. Because really? Did you press charges? She wrote me from jail. And she said, and the letter was super like well-written. And Was she attractive? Was she? Yes. Re- okay, okay, okay. And so she, she got That's arrested different. because she said Mercedes-Benz set her up. Mm-hmm. She was walking by Mercedes. And I guess if you buy a Mercedes, they start the car and they leave it out front for you. So you can just right. get in it, right? So she was like, well, why would they have started a car and left it out front if it wasn't for me? So, so she, she just took a car. So she, she just got in and drove away. Mm-hmm. And so when she got arrested, she was like, the, you know, the system is against me and it's an, it's an Asian, you know, it's an Asian thing. And the Damn. police were like, you actually stole, stole a car. So she wrote me from jail asking for $10,000. <laughs> no way. <laughs> the, the, and yeah. what happened? You hooked up with her? No, dude. She, this is like. Oh, wow. This she, is her website? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so here's the emails. This is the second email I will probably not be sending anymore. Anyone who says that will definitely be sending oh, more. Oh, my Let me tell you that. Lord, dude. So look at the, look at the subject. Oh, this Three is Three R sphincter asshole, rectum asshole. Oh, come on. This is too much, man. Really sorry for what's happening in your life, but you've got to stop sending these to me. Thanks, Josh. Oh, you emailed her back. I was just trying to, to get out gracefully because she was sending the weirdest... Dude, if I sent, if I showed you the five thousand emails she sent me, wow. Do you, do you ever see now? Were there images in the emails too? Sometimes or no? One email was just a picture of the house across the street from my house. Oh wow! I sent about five hundred of these emails to. I had a friend of mine who was in the Secret Service, and I sent it to him, and I go, "Am I going to die?" And he sent me back. He goes, "No." He said, "She's crazy, but she's like crazy, like Russell Crowe, Beautiful Mind, crazy." Yeah. He said, "But none of this tells tells me she's." Um, thinking about doing something dangerous. Dang. But it was crazy, man. This is all, right? This is all crazy writings. So was she, Do you in the end, do you think she was manic, having like a manic episode? Yes. I had an acting class with a girl who was having a manic episode for like six months on Facebook. And she would post things about Brad Pitt. Um, she would post like all kinds of crazy stories like that she was involved in like celebrities' lives and stuff. Um and it was pretty fascinating to read, but it was also really, really scary, you know? Yeah. And then I think people that tried to reach her, like she would like lash out at them in some of her posts, you know, like my dad called me today and it was just intense, man. I don't, I don't know what you do if somebody's really sick like that. I, I don't know. I can tell when she's on her meds and not on her meds. If when she's not on her meds, I get 10 to 15 emails a day. <sighs> But they but I'll go three months without getting any. Dude, one day at my house mm-hmm. on my home phone. Now we've always had a home phone just because Beth is like, just in case we need a home phone. But nobody has that number, you know? So I get a phone call. My family has it. I get a phone call and I'm like, hello. And, and it's Wang? It's worse than Wang. I go, hello. And they said, Josh Wolf. I go, yeah, speaking. And they said, this is, I forget what his name. This is so and so, so and so, the head of Tom Cruise's security. And I thought it was my brother. And I just said, hey, Dan, fuck you. And I hung up. Two seconds later, same number. And I go, Dan, are we going to do this like Tom Cruise's security? This is what you're going for? Hung up. 
call back. Don't hang up. I need to ask you about Sandy Wang. Now, I know my brother doesn't know about Sandy Wang. Dang. And I know there are only two people in my life who do know. Me and Beth. Oh, yeah. and Jacob. Because I needed to be like, hey, if you see a short little Asian woman around the house. Yeah. Get the fuck out. Even though he'd probably try to smash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jacob, dude. <laughs> that dude is definitely... <laughs> He's about some fucking. Bro. I mean, listen, he's man. at that age. And look, too. I feel it. Yeah. yeah, he's at that age where he is still willing. Here's exactly how old he is. He is still willing to fuck someone that is extremely dangerous. Yo, yeah. we've all been that. How old are you? I'm. I would fuck a stalker. That's how old I am. That is a hundred percent right. That is an age. You know what? That's like I've always said. You know, in high school, somebody would ask me. We talk about deal breakers, and we got down to high school. I'm like, I don't know if I had a deal breaker in high school. Yeah. Like I had a woman, a girl literally mm -hmm. throw up on me in when I was a junior in high school, mm -hmm. but I was thinking I was going to have sex for the first time. Oh yeah. So I just told her straight up, not a, I'll shower it off. Like not a deal breaker for me. Damn. But she, she was like, are you kidding? And I said, no, like, Damn. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, but that's young. You don't know. You think she's going that way too. Yeah. And you're like, oh no, this yeah, isn't this Japanese be sexy. As Let's I get back in there. Let's get back in that shower. Yeah. I think I've had, let me think, I've had, let me think if there was deal breakers. Oh, wet mouth. I dated this girl for a little bit and her mouth was always real wet. And like it, the lips? Yeah, lips and a little bit, like a probably two, maybe half a centimeter outside of the lips. Mm. And so it was like, beautiful girl too. And so it was like, oh, this is really cool. But then it started to be like, uh, oh, and then she had like sign up kind of a, she smelled like a little her breath had like a unique smell that got worse as the night went on progressively so it, bad breath yeah it was like progressively bad and then i think you had to put her to sleep to fucking get it back to zero you know and then you know so you wanted to take her to brunch it was that kind of girl you know <laughs> it was like let's fucking brunch and hunt you feel me you know what i'm saying that netflix and chill yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yo there was a girl that i picked up when i was in Pro in high school i was at my friend's house um he had his he was his family had a little bit of money and they had a house on cape cod in the summer oh yeah that's rich bro yeah we we definitely did not have that kind of dough and um but we picked cape up cape cod dude i never even had cod until i was fucking probably 25 you, you wore a cape though i did wear a cape. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right yeah. that's a good point you, you did wear a cape so even even this girl we 17 we met her at the beach her breath was so bad when my buddy brought he was like we're gonna go back to my house i was like what am i gonna do with this girl's breath he was like well, when you get back home like just give her some food so i tried to uh, i tried to convince this oh, girl feed down the breath yeah i tried to convince her that we should both eat a teaspoon of peanut butter oh yeah i was like how about cute. some peanut butter and she was like what she wanted doritos i'm like no nah, no not with that not what's coming out of that mouth. We ain't adding fuel to the fire <laughs> no. yeah no but a spoonful of peanut butter i thought that's a good idea yeah, it's it's like because breath you have to get something to like. Well, I'm okay with if somebody's breath is a little bad, like if it's dehydration breath, like some yep. things you kind of know. Okay, it's just this is a moment they're going through. But the thing is, if you get somebody and you smell that it's internal, that they're rotten out or something, or they're, you know, they had a baby that didn't hatch or so, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what's going on sometimes, and somebody, some of these issues are deep rooted. You know what I'm saying? And you know some dogs can smell cancer. Bring that up, Sean. Wait, that's true. What can dogs smell? What diseases can dogs smell, please? By the way, did you hear that they're... Yeah. Stuff out of a variety of types, including skin cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, definitely believe that. Yep. Bladder cancer and lung cancer. Dude, if you smell enough ass like dog does, you will definitely... Yeah. Two of those is a definite... They for sure know what a good ass smells like. There's Dogs no doubt. are famous for their sense of smell. This sense is so advanced, they can smell diseases or medical conditions. Um, they You'll, have about 220 million receptors compared to 5 to 10 million in us. That's Imagine being able to smell that good. Imagine being able to smell maybe if the neighbors are cooking. Would right you now. rather have that intense sense of smell or sight? I think sight because smell here's the thing that would deter smell I think it would start to like if you got into like mating situations or sexual situations it would really I think for me it would inhibit me because I would get real nervous it would make you know it'd be like you know the less I can smell I feel like for sex the better you know mm -hmm. now 
it also amazes me that a dog can um they can smell that good and still want to have sex that much yeah I it's think, almost just it's almost like extraterrestrial really yeah i think they are like high school kids times 20 though it's just pure animal instinct like yeah you know i think all ass is good ass as far as they're oh, concerned damn. i don't i don't think you know what i mean i don't think have no. you ever seen a dog get to an ass and be like oh god <laughs> no, yeah you know they're always like yeah i'll take another sniff that's like crazy. <laughs> there's no dog has ever been like oh that's not i can't do that you it's know savage it's almost like they're on cocaine you know because i feel like if you're on cocaine you'll definitely you'll smell somebody's ass more than once um, here's a disease right here. Narcolepsy is a disorder that affects the ability to control sleep wake cycles. Dogs can smell that? How do you smell narcolepsy? Two trained dogs detected 11 of 12 narcolepsy patients using sweat samples. Dogs can detect a distinct scent from the disorder. Wow. That is crazy to me. That's fascinating. I, I wouldn't want the sense of smell mostly, and here's our difference in ages. You're thinking sex. I'm thinking restaurants like I, there's too. I, I like my food, right? The less you know about how shit goes down in a restaurant. Cause I've worked in re a lot of restaurants. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I you don't want to know what's happening back there. No, you, you just, it's two different teams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Restaurant <laughs> is two different teams. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 It's the, it's the bucks and it's the chiefs. Yeah. You and you don't, by the way. And the Chiefs are doing their best, man. They got a mixed guy back there. They're doing what they can. They got a couple of brothers. You know what I'm saying? You know what? They're doing what they can. But the Bucks, man, the Bucks are showing up to eat. <laughs> I'm saying, and you know what else? For me, like, I don't want to know how it got made. I don't want to know. Like, don't don't break. Don't lift yeah. the. Don't open the curtain for me. Don't show me that fourth wall. Nah, just make sure when it comes out, the plate looks clean. Yeah. And the food looks right. Yeah. Because don't be like, oh, sorry, he dropped a burger on the ground. We're going to have to make another one. Don't tell me that. Yeah. Just actually pick up that burger. Yeah. And wipe that motherfucker <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not going to know, but now I'm going to think every burger has been dropped on the floor. Yeah, they do drop you, everything. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, mm -mm, just wipe it off. We, we, you worked at restaurants. I'm sure you worked at restaurants. Oh, yeah, I worked at them, man. Uh, Oh, yeah. And gross shit happens in the kitchens. It's just, it's like, yeah. I mean, it's all, it's literally, they're doing their best to get food out there. Yeah. That's all they're doing. They're not, nobody's a chef back there in 95% of these places. <laughs> I love it. I love it when they're like, when you ask a waiter and you're like, let me ask the chef. I'm like, <laughs> is there a chef back there? Yeah. <laughs> This is fucking, we're at Cracker Barrel, bro. There's no chef Yeah, let here. me ask the chef. Yeah. You call him a chef because he's wearing a hat? Because yeah. that, I, you know what I mean? Like, I make eggs at my house too, you know? Dude, I remember I used to work, I worked for this famous restaurant tour, this guy Sam Fox, and this is when he first started restauranting. And I want to say he was just managing at this restaurant. And I worked there, and some guy, this guy, little Scotty, he, uh, he looked like the, um, chef from the muppets can you bring that fella up sean i love that dude and uh sean sometimes a little slow he's also a tennessee volunteers fan so that all checks out uh <laughs> sorry but they just the volunteers have to be good the <laughs> yeah i saw i saw oh I'm this dude yeah i'm just joking sean um and I don't, I don't i didn't even give sean a mic to defend himself today either so I, I shouldn't have said that if you like sex or if you don't even like it but you you don't you have to do it because you have a spouse or you have somebody who wants who wants sex from you you know and an inmate somebody well look bluechew.com offers men a performance enhancement for the bedroom or kitchen or basement or a commissary wherever you little inmates are getting nasty the chewables from bluechew.com can be taken on a full or empty stomach now, look, I prefer to do sex on an empty stomach, but that's just me, you know? And that's also a Vietnamese trick. The chewables from BlueChew.com are made in the USA. None of those uh, India penis pills like I've been on make your legs sweat, make your body feel real troubled after. Here's a great deal. Support the podcast. Come on. We need support. And you need good wiener. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code THEO. Just pay $5 shipping. 
That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com, promo code T-H-E-O. I've used these wiener hitters, man, and they work. Onward. Whoo, after the year uh, that I've been through, I'm going to tell you that saving money should be at the top of everyone's resolution list. So if you're still paying insane amounts of money every month for wireless, well, that's not saving money, is it? What are you doing? Switch to Mint Mobile. It's the easiest way to save this year. Yep, that's right. The first company to sell premium wireless service online only. That's right, Mint Mobile. Let's you maximize your savings. Save your money. It's just $15 a month. That's one $5. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes savings on to you. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same number along with all your contacts. If you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. That's your money right back. Switch to Mint Mobile. Premium wireless service, just $15 a month. What are you doing with these other companies? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your front door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash T-H-E-O. That's mintmobile.com slash Theo. Cut your wireless bill to 15 buckaroos a month at mintmobile.com slash Theo. So we had a guy look like this. This dude was probably four nine right four nine little scotty they called him and uh he had a chef's hat that was a foot and a half tall dude to make him fucking whatever five eleven and dude these federales these like food federales rolled in one day kicked open the back door and they busted him for uh slanging illegal shrimp he had illegal illegal shrimp what does that mean u12 shrimp you look up u12 shrimp what u12 shrimp yeah see what it says Jumbo Shrimp U12. Let's get an image of those bad boys if we can. I I, I don't even know that the shrimp had names. Oh, yeah. Shrimp come in different. Uh, colossal U12 white. So he was Headless saying he had these, but he didn't. Caught shrimp. $17 a pound. He did. He bought them illegally. Or illegally. He went yeah. black market black shrimp. Black market shrimp, dude. And they came in, bust, and they put him on his knees. At that point on his knees, he's 2'4". Yeah. You know what I'm saying, dude? <laughs> And they kicked his hat off, dude, and everybody was, <laughs> bro, when he lost his hat, that's when he lost his everything. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Did all the illegal receipts from the shrimp come out from under his hat? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's where he was keeping them. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, this is the shrimp chart right here. So you got small. That's those 5160s. But wait now. You got medium. That's 4150s, 3640s. But who's selling U12s that aren't U12s. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's saying, hey, I got that U12? Somebody, man. This is Tucson, Arizona. So people rolling around with fucking hot shrimp. And that's the thing, dude. You got to sell them fast, dude. You know what I'm saying? You got to sell them for the ice melts. It's that ticking time bomb of, uh, you know, it's that pop quiz hot shot of of seafood. Have you ever had a a food poisoning from, uh, from seafood? I mean, growing up in Louisiana, you had bad fish? Oh, uh, no, we had pretty good fish, I think, in our area, man. I think a lot of the Chinese came through recently, or the Viets came through and gave us, uh, we look up uh, Vietnamese catfish takes over America. We look over that. Vietnamese. You mean a different, why are they eating all of the? No, this was, uh, in 2012, Vietnamese catfish captured around 20% of American frozen fish market. Whoa. In 2002, sorry, in 2002, Vietnamese catfish captured 20% of American frozen food market. In 2012, this figure went up to 60%. Most of the catfish you get if you go somewhere, it's not even American catfish, man. Wait, so they they fly it over from Vietnam or they grow the Vietnamese catfish here? Uh, That's a good question. Let's go to catfish dispute up there at the top. That seems like... Because that sounds realistic. Entry to U.S. market. After years of conflicts, the relationship between the U.S. and Vietnam was eventually brightened up when the embargo by the U.S. to Vietnam was lifted in 95. In December 2001, Viet signed a bilateral trade agreement. Um, oh, there it is. Imported from Vietnam. U.S. catfish is generally raised in Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana in ponds. Mm-hmm. Increasing number of catfish imported from Vietnam. I wonder why. I mean, it's not... Uh, you can grow you can spawn as many fish as you need to in these ponds is it that much cheaper to fly them over from a different country 
That's crazy. So then when you think about, it must be. So then when you, when you think about that with the shipping costs. That's what I'm saying. And to keep it cold, you have to keep it cold or keep it in water. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like they, it, so, and that goes back to, it's like when I, when I used to eat breakfast at places like Shoney's, you mm-hmm. know, Shoney's and yeah, when they would say steak and eggs for three ninety nine, I'm like, leave the steak, like steak by itself for three ninety nine. I'm not eating, but yeah. steak and other shit for three ninety nine. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, but that's the thing. Like, what, so what are they doing to that steak? What are they doing to that catfish to make it so cheap? Yeah. I can't even, they must be. Maybe s- it's uneducated. I mean, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, maybe it's like been yeah. raised in like a, just like a damn yeah. little fish kennel. You that know? is so crazy. My sister has a bass in a freaking, my sister is pretty country. They live like within, you could, Uncle, Uncle, who's that guy in, uh, Uncle Reno? Who's that guy in? Uh, in what? F- uh, Uncle Rico. Uncle Rico could throw a football from a Cabela's to their house, right? Oh, yeah. And. uh Oh, yeah. And. um they have a bass in a uh, aquarium that can't turn around. It's like, come on, yeah, it's like a. So it just does this the whole yeah, day. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, th- but it's been alive for like seven years, man. But angry. I mean, I'm sure it's not fired up. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that bass is the only bass that would straight up attack. Like, yeah. that has got to be the worst life. Take me to the yeah. river. Yeah. I think maybe that's where they copyrighted yeah. that thing. Put me in the water. He's just pleading. <laughs> Kill me. That is a tough way to go, man. It's a crazy like life. This? But the kids are healthy. Her two daughters are doing fine. So they just, you know, they don't change up the game, man. But yeah, so it's crazy. A lot of it is called w- w- wayfish, I think, or we fish. Let me see what it says. Food labeling claims right there. Tra or basa. They started. Na- so a lot of times it will say catfish on the menu. Yeah. And you're not getting catfish. And I, I could taste it, man. When I first probably about five years ago i started noticing even in new orleans man i would just notice this catfish is real thin it's just it's, really yeah it seems like it's probably a gamer you know it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it just yeah, didn't yeah. it wasn't that thick breasty <laughs> yeah, filet yeah 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 and that's when i realized that oh it was viet man it wasn't even american ca- american catfish yeah i wonder what the cost what is the cost savings can you look that up sean what the cost savings but if they're smaller fish too because maybe that's it also maybe you're getting a, a smaller fish but still to to have them sent on a fucking boat has got to be so damn expensive the great catfish war rages on have you ever done the noodling I haven't done it. We've had that that young lady came on King and the Sting, Hannah Barron. Yeah. That champion girl. And what'd she say? What's the trick to that? She said just being tough, really. I think I think the biggest thing is just getting used to them biting you. You know, like it's basically like getting your hand stuck in something really hard. You it's know? just pressure, right? It's not teeth, is that right? It's teeth, but they're not they're not gonna cut you open. So you're not gonna slit your wrist or anything. Right. But they're gonna it's gonna be spooky, you know? That's the thing, like how uh, how are you with like where are you with risk and adrenaline junkie and all that stuff like is it is is noodling something that you're like i'd like to try that i would do noodling me yeah. too i agree with you on that i would do noodling but i won't skateboard me neither not at this age yeah no i theo i hit the ground i slipped on the ice two days ago when's the last time you hit the ground hard um young man oh i got body slammed earlier today by a 65 year old at the uh, how does that feel it fucking felt <laughs> I felt like it, dude. I was willing to be his grandson for a second, dude. That's how weird it was, man. It was intense. I mean, you, that jujitsu man is it's pretty hardy. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty hardy. And you fell, you fell on the ice, dude. I slipped, and when Where? I was right in front of my house, Ooh. going down the hill, so my dog took it's pretty, off. This is you guys are it's steep out there. Yeah, my dog took off, and I slipped. So when I was in midair, he kept running. So he just pulled me, and when I landed, dude. I landed so hard that I was like, all right, I know adrenaline's with me, but I'm hurt. Dang. So as soon as I hit the ground, I started calling for Beth. Yeah. I was right out in front of our giant windows. I could see her inside. It was like a scream movie. You know when someone gets killed, Mm -hmm. but the people inside can't hear them? So I'm screaming to Beth. Yeah. I can just see her, but I'm literally, and I'm trying to get on my feet, but my dog thinks I'm playing. So every time I get on my hands, he knocks my hands out from under me. Fucking 
so he's knocking me down <laughs> and uh I, I i had to crawl back up the hill because i was wearing pumas no traction oh, i had to crawl and every five feet i was crawling he would knock me out oh it was terrible i got cut up i got cut up on my hands it was <laughs> What's his name harry styles what's the dog's name yeah <laughs> indiana jones oh indiana jones my yeah, bad my yeah bad. harry that's a better name though Indiana Jones, man, this dog has straight up lost his mind since he moved here. And what kind of dog is it? Let's see a picture of it. He's half like pit this. bull, half uh um half pit bull, half American bulldog. Let's see this dog right here. Uh, I, there's an upside down picture of him right there. Oh damn. Look at that dude. Oh, it's beautiful. How yeah, much does man. a dog like that weigh? Sixty eight pounds, dude. Um, but he had huge nuts that Ooh. Beth did not want me to take off. Y'all took him off? She was like, why? Are, she kept saying every morning I would come down and she would just be petting him but looking at his nuts. And I'm like, mm. I said, what? That's the first sign of fucking somebody leaving you. I, I, when I asked her, I go, what's the deal? She was like, why are his nuts so much cuter than yours? I'm like, what's that? She goes, yours are wrinkly and like his are so smooth and tight. Yeah, he's got that good bag, man. But listen, man, he was—he's younger than me, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, he's—I got a couple of years on this dude. That—that's your guy right there. Have you seen that video of the dude making a bong out of a bit out of a bass? Oh yeah, I've seen that guy bass. Okay, bong. Yeah, this—this yes. this dude. This dude is redneck as f. <laughs> <I know. laughs> tell me, I gotta tell you, it didn't even work. Gang, 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 gang. gang, gang. Oh, yeah, gang that's up. your guy. That's your guy, man. I didn't realize that is our guy. Oh, that's man. your guy. And this is me. Obviously, that's my one of my. That is not you. That's that is one of my first headshots in L.A. Look at that, dude. That ain't you. Yeah, that's me, man. Where, or are you, is this in? Uh, hold on, is this uh, near the docks in New York in 1908? <laughs> Why do I look 80 in this picture? Bro, first of all, bro, that <laughs> literally looks like my grandfather. <laughs> There is Are no you serious. Yeah, that's me in that's me in 1990, probably eight. Let's look at some other ones, man. Let's look up. Uh, let's do Bobby Lee uh, early headshot. You should look at Joe Diaz. Have you seen his early headshots? I'm trying to think if I have or not. Let's his see. early ho his early headshots. Oh, that yeah. one right there. That's my one of Bobby. I remember. Oh wow. Yeah, that's the one. Wow, yeah. look at him. But he looks like a, somebody that works at Islands Restaurant. Remember Islands? Yeah, but he also looks like a guy who works at Islands, Islands but also gives hand jobs in the back. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the, but look at, not that one, but the one but, after. Look what happens after a couple of years in LA. Oh. Like that that dude looks like- he, he Very just, different. And look at this one with the guitar. Go look at that one. You can see how bad he's doing now. I mean, it's so crazy, oh, right? Crazy I mean, he's really happened. changed it up. Oh, Kalila took his nuts. You can tell that, David. <laughs> He even talked about it in a recent episode. <laughs> look. Oh, look at this legend here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look at that. Yep. My brother took <laughs> that picture. Hold on. Look at his slinging dictates. Yo, right? yeah, dude. A hundred percent. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bro, now all his stories that make so much more sense when you see this guy. Yeah, you know? dude. Because then now you see him as this more agile fucking let's do it all. You know? Yo, so when I met him, he was 225 pounds. He would go on stage in a three-piece suit, um, and he paced like crazy. Really? He paced like crazy, and he did this with his hand all the time. So he made the people in the front row kind of uncomfortable. Because I see that. Because he was an intimidating dude, you know what I mean? Um, but I will tell you, and, and, I, and I said this before, the, uh, both Joey, because I started with Joey and Brody. Mm-hmm. And um, they, when they first started and they were writing jokes, it was almost unbearable. But when they would bomb and ditch their jokes and just become themselves on stage, yeah, they would light up. They would light up the room, and it, you, I watched them gradually progress into realizing, oh, I just got to be myself on stage. Yeah, a especially those two guys. Do you know what I mean? Like the, Oh yeah. Their oh, personalities. Totally. Yeah, they're really yeah. I mean, with um with Brody, let's see Brody Stevens early headshot too. Brody, you had to buy into who he was. Right. That's the thing. You'd see people who were sitting there like, This guy's horrible. Yeah. And it's like, no, you don't if you knew that in the parking lot he's he shows up telling people his vitamin regimen and how he's been doing. Yeah. Um if you knew that his GPA is something he really talks about 
what he how he did in school at ASU. Yeah. It it makes sense. You know what he three point six. Think about yeah. It. <laughs> if you knew that he just yeah. wandered around like that, then you weren't shocked when he got on stage. Just keep looking, see if you find what, anything. Uh, I mean, if you you know little things, Theo, like watching him stretch on stage, like mm-hmm. kick his leg up. Oh and, yeah, because it was so authentic to just who he was. He got more laughs off of jokes with more with that didn't have punchlines than anybody I've ever known oh, yeah. in my life. I mean, it was amazing to watch. But yeah, he had his own way of, you know, he had his own, yeah, he just did his own thing. But he, yes, he became just, they wanted to love him. And I think that's a lot of audiences. It's like they want to get to know this person that they're going to see, yeah. you know. And a lot of uh, of comedians, a lot of us, we think it's just about the joke and it's not about ourselves you know it, but the crazy part is it's hard to get comfortable enough on stage to get back to just being yourself it's like this big huge circle it's like in the beginning you'd be comfortable by your friends y'all are comfortable having fun at the lunch table yep. you know people spitting out milk people's having fun it's fun you yep. know it's fun and there you that's where you get a little idea in your head man maybe i'm funny you know and then you take it on this big circle and there's no pressure at the lunch table it's fun you it's all good you're gonna leave they're gonna leave you're all going to class whatever and i feel like eventually the goal is to get back to that spot on stage um i agree with you 100 percent. i i think man the trick for a lot of us is so when you first start out there are very few people who are confident enough to be themselves you oh, agreed you're some sort of heightened reality of yourself yeah right and that heightened reality changes either in how you talk and how you like when I was a younger comic heightened reality me was louder moved around oh, a lot yeah. more do you know what I mean oh yeah and so but but the trick is to hopefully your audience allows you to grow and change and morph into the real you mm. do you know what I mean Hopefully your audience realizes that as an artist, you're growing also and you're changing. And I can't be the exact dude I was when I was 10 years in because I'm 15 years in now. Wow. And I'm a different person. You know what I mean? And it gets scary as an artist too because you get stuck thinking, okay, well, is that just the, like, is that the only me? Is that the best me? Like, how will I, can I shake that? Is it okay to grow into myself or is the audience still going to support me? I think also like if you get an audience too early, it could be bad if you haven't really become whoever you're going to be because then yeah. they're getting this like version of you that's not really refined or it's not really a hundred percent as authentic as you could get. Here's a question that came in right here from someone. And this could be Brendan Shaw. Hey Josh, Theo, it's Brad from Vancouver, Canada. Hey Brad. Josh, question for you. What is the uh, the craziest story you have about living with Joey Diaz? Gang, gang. Gang, brother. All right, I got a couple questions. First of all, did he need to be shirtless for the question? or I think it makes him feel... Look, I can't, I can't make it through a, a good television program. I can't make it through an episode of The Wire without taking my shirt off. Well, yeah, but that's personal. You know what I mean? That's something where you're like, yeah. I feel like I need to breathe. But I just need to, yeah, it's yeah, just like yeah, I feel yeah, restricted. Yeah. <laughs> but I do like the fact that he might have squeezed his nipple a little bit right towards the end. So I like this dude. It's that nervous habit, baby. And here I will tell you, uh, my favorite Joe Diaz stories come from, you know, he used to babysit my kids. Right. And um, Did you guys ever do the road together? Yeah, man. He sold me once for a bag of weed. Did he really? For sex or what? Yo, so pre-phones... We might have had pagers. Me, him, and a guy named Lenny Schmidt. Mm-hmm. Lenny was living in Seattle at the time, but he's out of Chicago. Black guy? Nope. Uh, Irish dude. L- bring up Lenny Schmidt. Uh, I just want to know visually who we're even thinking about. Um, I don't want to be thinking and, and, and be wrong. That Yeah, that's... There you go. There you go. Oh, he was in Joe Dirt. Oh, Lenny, huh? Yeah. Wow, there you go. Lenny Schmidt. So me, Joe oh, Diaz, Lenny Schmidt. Mm-hmm. We drive down to Roseburg, Washington. We do a one-nighter. Um, and uh, we're out at the bar afterwards. And we're sitting, um, as Joe Diaz called her, he, he was like, we're going to bring that girl who looks like me with a wig? I'm like, yeah, we're going to bring her. <laughs> she wanted to come. I was like, yeah, we'll bring her. She was driving too, you know. So we go to this bar. I go to the bathroom. I come back. Joey and Lenny are gone. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there for a second, and we we're talking, me and the girl, for a little while. And then finally, I'm like, where, where are Joe and Lenny? And she said, oh, Joey sold you for a bag of weed. And I was like, what? I thought it was a joke. And because he said, where can I get some weed? I don't have a lot of money. And she said, I can get you a bag of weed, but you got to leave your friend. Damn. Why you're in the, why you're in the John. And he said, deal. So I come out and I'm like, well. Your property now. Yeah. I was like, well, I don't know how that's going to work. Oh, this is Jim Crow era. Yeah. I was like, well, I don't know if I'm down with that, you know. Because she really, look, she was not my, that was not my style. Yeah. She was not, I, and by the way, I, I'm not, I always dated bigger girls. So big was, isn't an issue for me. Like, yeah. I I always said, like, I like a girl with a with a big ass. I like to see the wave. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm, I have a big mouth, so I like my girls to be a little bigger just in case there's a fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Beth is the first girl that I ever dated that was, I like them a little bigger. So this girl being big wasn't a problem. Just the entire situation. You weren't attracted to her. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. She goes, I go, let me drive me back to that hotel. She goes, oh, okay. Was she nice? Was she cool? Yeah. Until we got back to her place. Oh, yeah. Now, she, why'd you go to her place? I thought you said hotel. Okay. I go, yeah, take me back to the hotel. She goes, cool. And I don't know anything about this place. She goes, hey, I just need to swing past my place real quick oh, yeah. to get some more weed for you guys. And then I'll just drive you to the hotel. And I'm like, perfect. More weed? How much you guys going to smoke? Well, well, I guess you got Joey with you. I figured Joey, it's gone this, by the time I get to the hotel. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? That's smoke a motive, baby. You, yeah. Dude, I showed up at that house and we park. She goes into her room to get weed. Mm-hmm. She comes out in this crazy lingerie, mm. dancing like the guy from no. Silence of the Lambs. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But like, but like let me give you an idea the the body type like the belly was bigger than the boobs oh yeah you know and no booty and so ooh, and and ooh, that's that tampa dude that's that tampa uh, yeah that's that delray beach yeah. stepmom dude but yeah but i'm gonna go even worse short curly hair Ooh, yeah yeah you know what i mean the whole package was not yeah but she's dancing in this lingerie and i'm like hey i gotta yeah. Yeah, I gotta and she goes, Let I me try it. something else on. She and I was like, No, 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 no. <laughs> try something else. So she on. goes back in and I'm looking for yellow pages because I'm like, I'm gonna call a cab. Yeah. Right? You know? She comes out with another one. She's running her finger over my cheek. At this point, it's feeling kind of rapey. Yeah. Cause I'm like, she's definitely double my weight. Like, I think I could outrun her, but she's got a car. Yeah. And she's bigger than me. Yeah, and you can't just run off in no. the distance. So like this guy, there's the Buffalo Bill dance. Her roommate comes home. Ooh. ooh. With her boyfriend, he walks in, and I stop him at the door. I go, hey, man, we don't know each other, but you got to get me out of here. Okay. And he was like, what? I go, I told him the situation. She comes out in her third outfit, and he looks at her and looks at the girl's roommate, and the girl's roommate goes, you mind your own business. And the guy was like, I got to take him home. I can't. I can't do. I can't do this to no. him. He guy coded me, and I was like, "Thanks, dude." He goes, "Yeah, I may not have sex tonight, but I'm gonna save you." I was like, "Dude, thank you so much." We didn't drive, <laughs> dude. We didn't talk on the way to the hotel. I just kind of looked out the window, like one tear. Like it was a traumatizing. But he dropped me off, and he and we just fist bumped. Didn't say anything. I walked to the room. I knocked on the door. I go, Joe Diaz, and he was like, "Who is it?" I go, "You know what the fuck it is." <laughs> and I was like, "You give me some of that weed." He was like, "No, we sm- we smoked all that dog." We- <laughs> An yeah, he he sold me for weed. Was asleep in my bed. Yeah. ate my food in my room, and then was like, "Hey, can you drive? I'm tired." I was like, <laughs> "But yeah, man, we we've done some road that's gigs a, together, dude. That's awesome, man. I'm trying to think if I had a good road gig story. What about the one where you and I tried to sell out a convention center? Oh man, is that the most embarrassing? That shows just how little we knew what was happening with stand up comedy, Theo. Man, that was wild, man. So I'll I'll, I'll start it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Josh, Josh and his wife, who is from Lake Charles, mm-hmm. was putting on a comedy show, and we would just been on Last Comic Standing, and they're like, "Hey, we can sell some tickets. Let's do a show down in Lake Charles." You're from right? Louisiana, best from Louisiana. Yeah, let's make it happen. We were just on TV. Yeah. TV must, it. yeah, we're going to sell this place. Yeah. So uh, how many seats was it? Let's look it up. Let's the, look up the place. The Lake Charles Convention Center? Yeah. I'm dying to know. Oh, me too. Well, hold on. Before you, hold on. Let's guess. You want to guess? Let's guess, yeah. 
15,000? No, you think? I'm going to guess. Oh, you might be right. I mean, it's at that convention center. Because Cable Guy had just played it. He had? Wow. Dude, I'm going to guess 2,600. 75. 7,500. All right. It Maybe it seemed like 1,500 because we only sold. <laughs> Can you show a picture from the stage? I wonder if there's any stage view. That's it. Wow. Do you remember how many people were in those seats, dude? So, I I remember because yes, I could see each one of them. There, at one point, we asked them all to come down to the front. Oh, you remember? So we were gonna do radio, right? So we didn't even have radio planned, and the convention center called, and they were like, "Are you guys expecting a late rush of tickets?" And I was like, you know, maybe. I go, why? Well, how many do we have sold? Because it was the weekend coming up. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we got 179 tickets. <laughs> and I was like, what? And, and they said, yeah. And they said, we've brought the curtains as far in as we can. Wow. But you know what I mean? And but so, yeah, but you still, there's still 4,500 <laughs> seats exposed. <laughs> Dude. And then here's my favorite part of that. Besides the fact that we did the show for probably, if there were 150 people there, I would be excited. I don't think there were. No. Some were bought as giveaways. I think so. Yeah. My favorite part about that, Theo, is that you know Beth made about 2,000 hats. You remember those no hats? No way. Uh -uh. Oh, I still got a box at my house. To, I give them away on my lives. Oh, I love that. But, but there's about, it just says fairly normal because remember we made that poster and fairly normal they, comedy tour is that yeah, it yeah 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 we made that po we yeah, made like a fairly normal comedy tour oh. there's no way there's a poster that was it that's it, it right there dude look at you wow look at that shit august 5th 8 p.m oh. lake charles this was two 2006. It, it, it wow. should have said everybody who buys one ticket gets the whole row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at this, dude. Um, oh, this is so terrible. Uh, Why are you third behind Flip Schultz? I don't know. It's just the whole thing's cringe. <laughs> That's, it's will, awesome, though. I can't. I will tell you, uh, man. Who, who opened the show? Flip? No, 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 no. Amy. Oh, yeah. Amy Claire. Amy Claire. Amy Claire opened the show because she was from, we thought, oh, she's from around here too. That'll help. She'll sell a bunch of tickets. None of us could sell anything. A ticket. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think all, most of them were you guys' as friends and family. All of them. Yeah. It was, it was t to this date, like the most humiliating walking out. It has to be the smallest amount of tickets ever sold in a large place. I can't imagine there's something smaller. 160 tickets in a... In a convention center? Yeah, in 7,500 seats. And But but I will tell you the truth. I, knowing what stand-up I was doing back then, that's about all it deserved. Yeah. Like, I didn't deserve more than 100 people. No. Dude, I was telling jokes about PT Cruisers that Flip had just bought one, and that was a crazy... That was the tough part of me for the weekend. 14% of my jokes were about um, kind of a homoerotic essence of a PT Cruiser car. Yep. And Flip Schultz had just gotten one as like his dream car. Or not dream car, but he just got one. He was pretty happy, one. yeah. Yeah, and he was happy. Yeah. So it was like, oh, man. We had also just got through on the radio the day before. We had just got through doing about a half an hour rant on his hands. Yeah. Really? On his skinny little fingers and how, oh, my God, dude. It was like, it was pretty crazy. And then he flew in. We had a great time, but 150 people was... I got a couple of those hats if you want them, man. I wouldn't mind a hat, I think. God. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, I can't believe it was 15 years ago. Do, 2006. 15? When do you feel like... Um, I only started comedy, I think, in 2003. Yeah, probably you had 2004. just started. When do you feel like, like around what time with your stand-up, because I think it, this happens for everybody, where you feel like, oh, you really sunk into it. You're like, got it. Well, I thought about this the other day. We were talking about it at the uh, at the comedy club. I was thinking, you know, I always felt like in the beginning of stand-up, it feels like 
there's like this tide coming in of like pressure mm -hmm. from the audience. You're like, okay, I have to get a joke and there's, you know, I got to get another joke and okay, there's a laughing, but there, it's all like defensive. There's this tide coming in and you have to like battle it and battle it. And then eventually over time, and you don't even really notice it, you get up and you don't, you're the tide. Yeah. So you are putting out the pressure. You are putting out the force. There's nothing coming back in. Maybe every now and then there's a little bit of like a, a undercurrent or something of like, okay, maybe I should move this along or I'm a little rusty. Mm -hmm. But there's, it gets to the point where you're the ocean, you're the force. And I think that's, that's just what I noticed over time. And I don't even know when it happened really. I think, you know, maybe a, like there was one point where I got upset with Hollywood and I just felt, well, I didn't, I don't know if I got upset. I've always kind of had a chip on my shoulder about Hollywood just because I feel like they don't put a lot of people, like regular people up in Hollywood that much mm -hmm, anymore. Mm -hmm, I you know? agree. And it's a lot of nepotism now. Yep. It's like this person's kid now. It's just, and the kid has no culture, you know, it's just, there's no, so I think, um, I was always trying to like sound like a perfect guy who would be somewhere, you know, oh, I'm in the yard next door, you know, like yeah. just this thing that would be okay for Hollywood. And then at one point I just said, dude, I'm just going to talk about what I like to, what I know. I'm going to talk about just the shit that was around me growing up and just the weird people and the shit that happened and people, you know, they busted a man trying to be a ghost in our town and just shit like that, you know, just like stories from home. And um, do you feel like, your comfort level when do you feel like when you started sitting down was also around the same time you got more comfortable uh no i don't think so i think i started sitting down just because um the, i have one story that takes like about 12 minutes and it's kind of better from a stool yeah and so i think that's kind of led to me sitting down i think in the future i'll probably have to get back on my feet to really start to feel everything again you yeah know? getting older it gets more comfortable sometimes sitting down too yeah I, you know what it was for me like I, it's about nuance. Like it is about the performance, you know? And as I've gotten older, I've really given myself more leeway to be experimental on stage. And um, so I did one whole tour from a stool. I did, then I did the next year just standing in front of the mic. Wow. And then I did one of just moving. And so I was like, it's so interesting. Now I can tell what part of the story needs me to be still. Mm. And what part of the story needs the motion because it really adds to the punch you know what i mean mm -hmm. but if you're always moving or you're always still like i really feels like you can figure out in your act what parts work better like that you mm. know what i mean and to me that those nuanced parts is what happens when you get a little older and you've been doing it a while you're like oh this this joke's gonna work better if i sit down for the minute leading up to it and then stand up for the joke yeah or sh little shit like that you know yeah that comedy nerd stuff, I, I really started to d to dive into, you know? Yeah. Well, you and me are more storytellers, I find, you yeah. know? And there's not a lot of that these days. Everything gets real cut and dried um, in stand-up. Are you, and I noticed that you, there was something up there that was dirty, and you said F. Do, are you, do you consider yourself clean? I think I just don't like, I try not to be vulgar. Right. Like, I noticed it started just... It's, I don't know, so, and I probably have a very bad understanding of if I am vulgar and then I'm not trying to be vulgar. Right. But I don't like, I think some stuff, is, if it feels too graphic to me, it just like, I don't know, a lot of times it takes people out of it, I feel, you know? I, yeah. I feel like if a if like there's a lady listening and she hears, uh, you know, if she hears me say the pussy or, yeah. you, know, you know, ejaculation or something like that or ejac or something, sometimes they... They shut it off. Yeah, Ejac's a tough one, I heard. Well, Ejac is easier to... <laughs> yeah. You get the yeah. point across. Yeah. You know? Well, I, you know, it's interesting. You know, I think it has to do with being authentic, right? Because I, I don't... I've, I've Very rarely do I hear people get offended by Joey because it's so authentic coming out of his mouth. Right. And if it's not authentic to you, then I think it offends people more easily because it also sounds Oh, that's weird. a good point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm never offended by anything Joey says because I'm like, that's just... It's like when a white guy says the N-word kind. It's like, oh, that sounds a little inauthentic. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. trying a little too hard. <laughs> yeah, <you're trying laughs> right now, I'm going to actually open up a select item. I haven't seen it yet, but gang, I'm interested in this thing, man. You got to see this beautiful hitter right here from Hood Hat. 
Our friends at Hood Hat are now making custom caps. That's right. Ooh. I got mine right here, man. Uh, they're now making custom caps made to order with your neighborhood or city's name on it. Hands down the best snapbacks in the game. They have that mid-profile vintage fit made from the finest merino wool. That's right. Hood hat. The essence of your neighborhood culture will always be a part of your DNA. And hood hat empowers you to tell the world where you're from. I got my gang buzz Mandeville lid and my gang buzz Covington lid right here. I got two of them. Man, on their website, you can... Make it exactly how you want it to fit your brand, fit your hood, fit your street name. Gang, baby, go get that from Hood Hat. Just go to Hood Hat USA or give them a look on Insta at Hood Hat USA. That's right. Use code THEO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's code THEO, the number two, the number zero for 20% off at checkout. Go to hoodhat.com. Let's... uh. Oh, here we got a question right here from a young gentleman right here, beautiful fella right here. It looks like the same dude with his shirt on. Yeah, it could be be (laughs) the same guy with his shirt on right here, beautiful man. Hey, what's up, guys? Quick question. Uh, Josh, probably more towards you. I got this little uh, little swag daddy over here. Yeah. What's up, player? You know, he's a stud. He's probably going to mount a lot when he gets older. Respect. (laughs) But uh, he's the defiant one. Starting not to listen, and I know when he gets older, he's probably gonna be a little motherfucker. Mm-hmm. So I want to know, you know, in this this new woke age, you can't hit your kids anymore, spank them. So Josh, what do you, you know, is there any other ways to discipline them? I know timeouts for pussies. Theo, you know, we come from a different time. Do you, you know? I'm sure you got spanked when you were a kid. Do you actually think it worked? Because when I was a kid, I remember I remember the beatings. I don't remember why I got the beating, so I don't know if I actually learned anything from it. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. If you guys can give any help, it would be appreciative. Thanks, guys. Gang, and uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Man, well, here's the deal. For a child that age, it's hard for them to understand discipline. And I, I, I firmly believe, especially that age, all physical does is instill fear because you have no understanding at that age. You know what I mean? I didn't hit my kids. Um, but I do think every kid needs to be parented differently. Like if I, I have three older brothers, we're all different people. We all responded in different ways. All my dad had to do to, was raise his voice to me. And I was like, fuck it. That I am good. Like I'm ready to do whatever you need. My brothers weren't that way. I will tell you this for me, for my kids. And I think Jacob is a good dude, man. He's turned out pretty well. Yeah, he seemed like a really cool guy. Um, man, there are things that they... Here's the thing. N- no, You don't negotiate with terrorists. They're all terrorists. Yeah. You don't keep giving chances. I, 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 I always told my kids, here are the rules. You're not going to hear me tell you again and warn you. I just gave you the, the warning is the rule. So there's you have to know... They have to know, oh, if this happens... I'm going to get in trouble. Right. And take everything. Phone, Xbox. You know, these this generation of kids thinks they're so tough. Have you seen videos of people getting their Xbox taken? Or, yeah. they, oh, they try to, sh- I mean, what's that crazy video where that dude tried to shove the remote control in his own asshole? He was so mad at his parents for stealing Damn. his. They go crazy, dude. They're not, t- all you got to do is take the phone, take the Xbox. They lose their mind. They don't know what to do. Huh? No. Take what they love. Le- yeah. Jacob one time defied me because I told him, no vapes, man. I better not ever see you with a vape. This You never saw this, Theo? Uh-uh. Oh, my God. I can't okay, believe it. My was- mom just canceled my brother's uh, World of Warcraft account, and he is freaking <gasps> out. <laughs> Do it a kid. Oh, my God. Hey, <laughs> This is fake, dude. Wait, the ending's the best. I don't think it's fake because I don't think kids are that good actors. Look, look how crazy. 
I don't know. Kids are willing to be good actors because they have no idea how ridiculous stuff looks. Oh, he's naked now after the sheet? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Oh my god. Here comes the come on, grab. Watch this. <laughs> oh my god. How primal, huh? <laughs> See, no way. Now this kid needs his ass beat. This is when you beat a kid. Yeah, man. But all I'm saying is, for me, it's just a tantrum. It's like a watching a baby, you know. But here's the deal, dude. So my son tried to throw a tantrum at a grocery store once. My mm -hmm. oldest son, Trevor. I left him. Yeah. I go, hey, man. We don't do this in public. And I go, we're leaving. He was like, I'm not leaving. I go, cool. I am. Yeah. I, I got Jacob. I got my daughter. We got in the car and we drove the fuck home. What time did he get home? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, he was eight. So I didn't leave him, leave him. I drove. Oh, wow. And then I drove back. I see. And they were going crazy. Like I, I came back. I came back like 20 minutes later. The other kid's like, you're leaving him? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm leaving him. And I go, no tantrums. This isn't what we do. Yeah. I remember my, my dad left my, my brother for real. But but like oh yeah we got left I mean my mom would be like yeah I can't come get you no or if there was any oh I gave spankings I'm trying to think of what else if we got really left uh yeah she would be like I you know I'm not coming to pick you up and she'd have to walk home I remember walking three four miles to get home I remember walking when I wanted to go somewhere a lot of times you know yeah. or taking my bike you know I bike three four miles um my brother walked like eleven miles once to the movie theater. You know, which is insane, I thought. And I think the girl didn't even show up. Oh, oh. that is the because the whole way he was going, especially back oh, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Louisiana, bro. Oh, it's humid. Yeah. After that first 200 feet, it's Sweaty. a wet stomp. Oh, he couldn't wait to get in that cool, oh. dr dark movie theater sitting next to his girl. Sitting next to his girl, dude. Watch a little uh, Point Break. Oh. oh, and you know, when he got in that movie theater, he was sweaty. It was chilly. <sighs> I, I I remember uh feel bad for him. I still trying to make out with girls at movies like when I Dude, yeah. My thing was I'd invite a girl and I would get there and I would get there. I'd invite a girl when it was cold out and I'd get there early so I'd have to pay to go in mm -hmm. and then they'd have to pay to go in for themselves, you know. Oh, you weren't you were going Dutch? No, nah, I I don't know if I I don't know if I was Dutch or not, but we <laughs> I paid and I hope that they would pay. <laughs> you got in there, you're like, oh yeah, I waited for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was well, so cold out. I also didn't have money to pay there. for. My first girlfriend looked like a boy anyway, bro. What was his name? Uh, her name was Susanna. And she's very beautiful, adult woman. But at the time, she had a very kind of a masculine energy as a child. And was she your first girlfriend? Mm, yeah, I think she was. She used to lift me up like I would kiss her and she would lift me up at the fucking bus stop and like put my legs around her waist. Like some like dirty was, dancing I shit? Mean, it was fucking, <laughs> I was, she was taller than me. She was older than me. Oh, really? She would literally lift me up and put my legs around her waist. Yo. And, like, and the guys on the bus would show up and they were all losers. None of them had any girlfriends, you know? And they'd be like, look at this thing, you know? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it was bad though. <laughs> She had you in a little baby Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> Facing forward. <laughs> yeah. <that. laughs> Yo, when I was real young, this girl, I must have been in sixth grade. This girl convinced me her name was Stephanie. And she was like, because I, I, I didn't know what you were supposed to do with girls. And I remember kissing her and stuff. And she was like, tomorrow night you can go up my shirt. But the back. And it was oh, still yeah. skin, you know? Oh yeah. So when I would go up the back of her shirt, dude, she would make her little, you know, the what are those? Fine, baby. She would make the what are those? Your shoulder blades? Yeah. She would stick them out so I could feel them. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. man. So I was like, I remember my brother being like, bat tits. I, that's what I told my brother. I said, back boobs, and he goes, that's not a thing. I go, 
it's the part he was like you have them too stupid like yeah but they're not they're not hers they're not on stephanie yeah dude i i would go up there and squeeze those back boobs oh man. dude i remember yeah this girl that i dated she wore a bra she didn't even need a bra and she wore one and f- oh man i just remember being s- in heat you know how psyched were you that she had a bra oh, not even that the psyched. boobs just the bra man i oh like, what am i even doing around <laughs> this <laughs> <laughs> and she was rich, bro, and we were so poor. I was so embarrassed, man. Sometimes my mom would have to take us to the movies. My mom had like the smallest car. It was like she had a Ford Festiva. Bring that bad cat up. Yo. This thing. And they had like Mercedes or something, and they were like Ooh, Ford what color Festiva. Was your Let me see. Oh, that was it right there. Boom. Right there. That was Ooh. it. That was mom's car, dude. Now, let me ask no, the you. The gray one. The gray one. Go automatic gray. or manual? It was automatic, uh, manual. I do miss the manual. I do miss the, and was it four on the floor, like down here? Yeah, I was on the floor too, so it was five. Dude, I was so embarrassed <laughs> to be in there. <laughs> Yo, we didn't have a car. Uh, and, uh, and That thing ran on my tears, I felt like. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel bad, man. My mom was just trying to be a mom, but. Yeah, no, I get it, man. I had no, I was just. So... I love how it says pristine 1993 Ford Festival. <laughs> yeah, somebody's. Damn, that bitch is Rick and Look, it's sharp. How... Oh, you can drive. That's a how much suppository, let's, let's... dude. You can fill that thing with Xanax and drive it into your butt. <laughs> that thing is intense. Yo, fam. how much do you think? Let's make a guess. Price is right rules. How mm-hmm. much is a 1993. Pristine Ford Festiva going for. I'm gonna say right now in today's market, I'm gonna say seven thousand. Whoa, I think you're overshooting that. I'm gonna say <laughs> you might be right. I'm gonna say thirty forty two fifty. Thirty seven fifty. Forty nine ninety nine. That's interesting. Okay. Right. <laughs> That's not for the car. <laughs> Are you looking in the car part? <laughs> that actually, I mean, doesn't seem too far off. They have so many dope older pickup trucks in nashville oh yeah around this area i started looking at them i started thinking about uh i ended up getting a ford ranger that's what i got right i now. saw that i ended up getting a ford ranger but i thought about getting uh i want i thought about maybe trying to get one of those tesla trucks when it comes out those things look amazing man yeah. have you seen the rivion truck uh-uh oh you gotta see that well, who makes that um i'm not sure can you uh Sorry, Sean, we got you doing a million things. Dude, man. let me ask you one more question about your stand up. Mm-hmm. Because I'm 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 as I'm writing more and more, you write on stage or you write here? I write on stage. Yeah, me too. And then okay. I bring it off stage and then I'll sp- spruce it up, you know? Do you when you write on your computer, do you find that your jokes are different than the um, ones you come up with on stage? You know when you're sprucing it up, right? Yeah. I find whenever I write, whenever I sit down to write, I don't write jokes the way I talk. So the my best punchlines always come on stage because I'm I'm writing the way I talk. Oh yeah. And then I'll record it. Then I'll record it and then rewrite it down. Yeah. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Got but yeah, it. I find the funny thing for me, I, I've had jokes that I wrote like 10, 12 years ago that I've never tried on stage that I've always wanted to, and I'm still afraid to try them sometimes. So Theo, this special that I'm doing on March 4th, I found my very first comedy CD. Mm-hmm. And I was like, let me just listen to this. I made like 20 of them. And I thought, there's a bunch of good premises here, but I'm going to rewrite every joke and redo it. Really? So I didn't punch them up. I rewrote every joke under the, the microscope of who I am now. Right. It was such a cool thing, man. Hmm. Because a lot of those jokes, you know, when I listen to old jokes, I would li- I listened to the CD and I was like, Oh, that's a good joke, but I thought it was over. Like, if I got a laugh, I was like, okay, now I can move on. Yeah. As a younger comic, you're like, well, I don't need to dig or, you know. And I just found there was so much more. So this, the March 4th special that I'm doing is like the one I'm most excited about that I've ever done because it's, it's a, it, I've never done this before. I've never rewritten an entire hour of material. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Under being a better... So it comes out when? January 4th? Uh, uh, March 4th. Okay. Um, It streams live. So I'm doing one take. Dang. One take. I'm streaming it live. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but you know what, man? I love that shit. So I like kind of that fight or flight feeling. Mm-hmm. And so that really will give it to me. Dang, bro. That's ballsy. And yep. where are you guys going to film it Here. from? Here. Wow. 
That's awesome. Congrats, dude. Thanks, man. And and uh, yeah, you can get the tickets on my website, comedianjoshwolf.com. And will it be up at online after or no? Yeah, but we're going to, obviously, we're going to wait a little bit because we want people to... Right. Here's, here's what I really want. Man, I'm trying to show, hopefully, this is going to be good for all of us. Because hopefully, we don't need HBO or Netflix. If we put this up, man, and me with my reach... I sell a certain amount of tickets. Mm -hmm. And I say to you, I go, Theo, we may not need Netflix, man. I sold this amount of tickets. Lord knows what you could sell. Yeah. And then you own it. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. So you're, you're still making the paycheck that Netflix is going to give you. Right. But you get everything else on top of that. And you know, the special is going out to the people who want to see it because it's your people. Right. It's, it's, so I'm really, trying to not upset the apple cart altogether yeah but a uh, uh, a good amount of tickets sold will change the business it could change the business for all oh of yeah us. you and know I what i mean th- look i love that i love the idea of trying it different trying something new trying you know to for to put the power back in the hands of people you yeah. know it's crazy it's like um yeah it's crazy how much power that a lot of uh, these companies and they can flag you, they can take stuff down, they can limit you, they can not give you opportunities. It's just crazy to think that, um, especially since all, a lot of the media is just extremely liberal, which is fine, but it's not fine if that's the, if the, that's the judgment because there's going to become judgment with that. Yep. And so there's going to come judgment against like certain types of comedians. It's like, it's like they're j- sometimes you could say they're just letting through what they want to let through you know and so that could be a little bit scary like nobody should be not have a chance mm-hmm. you know because the guy at the finish line wants to move the finish line or make it only for certain people that's crazy right and i'm not saying that really applies here but it's really kind of like what it feels like sometimes like hollywood has become you know i think there's no doubt i think that you know my content has always been more geared towards the middle of the country than it has like my worst room to perform in the country for me consistently is that main room at the comedy store. Yeah. Easily my hardest room, my toughest room. I, I'm ne- I've, I'm not and never have been really one of the cool kids. Do you know what I mean? And it's a cool, that's a cool room, man. And the people who come down there are there to see the cool kids. And I feel like my humor is just a little broader. My stories are a little broader. You know what I mean? They're relatable to a large group of people but not so much on the coasts and those have been a harder rooms for me hmm. you know i'm trying to think of what my hardest room has probably been you know where i've always had a tough time man i feel like is in minneapolis well that you the house of comedy yeah those ceilings are thousands of feet high <laughs> oh, that's insane man. yo so those those ceilings okay, this helps a little because literally i tried to fucking jump off that thing i landed on a bounce house yeah <laughs> there's, there's so much going on in that mall yeah it's on yeah. the 17th floor yeah there are penguins in that mall bro. oh dude it's insane there's a gun there's a there's a gun range next to the weed store yeah i bought weed and then i went and shot guns yeah puff puff pop pop there 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 is and there's that water slide in the mall where you could when you can smell the herpes oh. and that 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 place is like you can't go to a water slide in a mall unless you want every disease like you, yeah you gotta cover let's your eyes get it on yeah let's get in there man yeah. mouth open let's oh, get into dude. that yeah your daughter's pregnant but she's only been on the water slide <laughs> yeah <laughs> Your dad's yeah. like, where have you been? Yeah. She's like, water slide. <laughs> like, who's that? A black yeah. guy? <laughs> You're like, no, that's a that's a mall. Yeah, they got a ice skating rink in there, man. They oh, got a intense, little bit man. of everything. That's yeah, intense. yeah. I can't believe you hadn't seen that video of that kid with a remote control. And- well, here's why it seemed fake to me. Because the brother runs in there, sets it up, yep. and then the kid comes in. It's just the, it's the exact way you would do something that was fake. The only and I that was my first thing too, except the kid. I just don't buy that you like I've ha- I have kids I just don't buy you go that mental. But do you feel like I feel like he's always playing to the camera. I feel like a little maybe. bit like he's playing to the camera. Maybe, maybe. But also I'm a naysayer. So I would say that I I would say what I just said. And, and I love weird shit so I'm just going to believe it. Yeah. Yeah, you're you, right. You know what I mean? This, it is a lot it's more fun, more fun to just believe. It's more fun for me just to believe that that kid, you know. I love the fact at the end the guy tries to put the remote into his butt because it's like <laughs> Him saying, you know what? I'm going to fucking show them 
I'm going to put something in my own ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That's how much. Which is a lot of, I think a lot of gay young men feel that way too. It's like, okay, this neighborhood has wronged me. This community hasn't accepted me. I'll show them I'm going to put something in my ass. I'm going to go sit know? on that long jockey. Yeah, yeah. Something like, it's just, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to fucking own, I'm going to control something, you know? I'm going to put direct TV right in my damn <laughs> record. You know? I'm going to freaking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am going <laughs> I'm going to watch F is for family on my damn kidneys okay? I got to tell you something though if that dude could control the remote control inside of his butt cheeks oh now we're talking viral if he, yeah if he could like pick channels and stuff yeah. that would be pretty impressive this dude Vincent Jackson must wait man he had been DMing me which is crazy really I feel like he'd been DMing a lot of people. Yeah, he would just kind of communicate. Uh, and he would send a lot of stuff that I felt like was kind of wild. Like links and things, you know? Like uh, just crazy videos. Sometimes some of it was a little bit too. It was almost like why it was like somebody getting hurt or something, you know? Yeah, I don't like those videos. Um, so some of that, sometimes I even said one time, I said, oh, I don't like that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but he seemed like a nice guy. I mean, I just messaged with him a few times. Um, but this is so sad, man. Hillsbury County Sheriff uh, Tampa Radio discussed the key findings autopsy that Jackson was suffering from chronic alcoholism. Man, let me ask you something, man. Because I, I for sure, I have deal with my own depression and stuff. You know, it seems like so much of this, like. The more I'm aware of it, when I read you read it, you're like, this just all feels like part of mental illness. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and like, uh, um, especially for guys like this, I'm sure it's harder when you've been such an alpha masculine dude, where your body is basically the that when your brain starts to betray you, that you just might you must not want to admit it. You know what I mean? It's oh, I'm hard, sure. It's hard enough. Like I, I have had a hard enough time, and I'm not some alpha, ultra masculine dude. But for these guys to admit that their brain is betraying them must be the hardest step for them. You know? It's a good point, man. I didn't really, I hadn't really thought about that. Yeah, because it's total opposite of everything of like the weights and the yeah. ability and the and push the, through it. Yeah, all that shit. Yeah, push through it. It's total opposite of everything that they've heard. Yeah, I can't imagine, man. And I think some of the come down of being like a hero. I mean, this guy was a he was great at football. I I, I thought he was still. I can't Me believe too. he. You know, I think it had been five years since he last played, which I found was kind of amazing. But, um, you know, maybe I wonder if he knew that I that I had suffered. You know, with uh with drinking or drugs and maybe that's why he had reached out to someone. I don't know. He never said anything like that. Yeah, I just found it kind of interesting. Maybe he was just a podcast fan, you know? I don't know. Um, but, you know, I do find that, like... Um, or podcast listener. You people know? do reach out, though. You know, it, I talked a couple weeks ago or maybe a couple months ago on uh, Fighter and the Kid about my daughter and her being in rehab and all that stuff. And more people reached out. Um, and I do find that when... when um, and I don't know if it's part of being in the program or part of being in recovery where you know that the more people that reach out, it almost makes that other person feel better. Do you know what I mean? Feeling less alone, I, I guess. Oh, yeah. And so maybe that's part of the thing that he, you know, he understood that that's where you were coming from too and it just made him feel less alone, maybe? I don't fucking know. Yeah, I don't know. I wish he'd have led some since, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like, I'm sure he was communicating with a lot of different, you know, people, but he was just, I don't know. Uh, it's just sad to think that a guy was at a, you know, that, had checked into a hotel and had been there for almost a month, it seemed like, or three weeks. Um, and that he had. By the way, if you're in a hotel for more than two them. weeks, something's up. Yeah. More than two weeks? Yeah. In if the you, same place in Bradenton, Florida? Yeah, if you're in a hotel for more than two weeks. I mean, look at this some, guy. This dude is a. Yeah. Physical at, specimen, apparently a really nice guy. I mean, but also how uh, the, the effect of alcoholism, if you look at it, like. He just finished playing five five days ago. Days? Can, or five uh five years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Can you put any other information? Can you go to another article, do you mind, Sean? But did they say how he Is it say anything else? Does it say how he died? Let me see. What happened Jackson was found dead in a Florida hotel room. The thirty eight. 
housekeeper, dude. Oh, that's you know scary, those housekeepers. Man. Anytime I've been high on drugs or whatever, that's the scariest thought is like that. That's who's going to come in. And think about that. They're a mom. They're a person too. You know, you know, it's not like they can just put you, you know, sweep you up and then, you know. I mean, they got to probably like rope the room off now. Oh. Now they got one less room. They're, they're being able to Yo, rent out. They've seen some housekeepers have seen some shit. Yeah. We need to get a good housekeeper on here, Sean. Housekeeper. I always thought, dude, a book I would read tomorrow is a book just from anonymous housekeepers mm -hmm. talking about weird things that they've walked in and found in hotel rooms. Bro, I'll tell you one right here. Ooh. And RIP Vincent Jackson, man. And, yeah. uh, and just so sorry, bro, that. Yeah, I mean, I just can't imagine him getting stuck inside of his own head and thinking he probably couldn't say anything to anybody. But how fast do you have to be drinking for alcoholism to progress when you just played football five years ago? I yeah. feel like that's pretty quick. Yeah, because to kill yourself with alcohol usually takes quite a long time. Right. Maybe, I mean... I mean, but I, I would just I would speculate he probably couldn't be drinking as much during his career. Right, right. So that's what I'm saying. Like, they had a kid from my hometown who just died, this young fellow named Court. Uh, name after the play space, you know? Yeah. And he died, and he had just drank himself to death. I mean, just crazy. And when I think about it, I'm like, man, yeah, he was always drunk every time I saw him. Like, yeah, that kind of stuff just doesn't end well, man. And um, I'll tell you this. So one time I had, I was doing comedy somewhere, and a girl that I'd been seeing or some girl I'd just met or something, uh, and I had ended up, sleeping in the same bed right and i don't remember if we i probably remember but i just don't i'm either i'm not sharing if we had sex or, or if we just made out or if she right. just slept over i don't know i don't i don't know and uh but in the morning she had gotten her period you know while she was asleep menstrual cycle so I what you meant. she left okay yeah she left yeah i didn't know if you were gonna, <laughs> i don't know if you, maybe yeah. she won a grammar contest or something you know Maybe she won yeah. a punctuation yeah. contest. Yeah. <laughs> maybe she was, maybe punctuation Phil had seen his yeah. shadow, you know? Yeah. And it was going to be, uh, so yeah. she was celebrating. But um, anyway, so uh, I, I I went to the um, the cleaning lady, you know, and I noticed, oh, the sheets have blood on them. So I, I should probably say something to clean lady. It's just not a nice surprise probably to get. So I went and the lady didn't speak any English. And I didn't know what language she spoke because right. I, hadn't, I, hadn't, I hadn't really met anybody that had spoken different languages. So I'm literally like, uh, uh, and I was just like making a bed like yeah. shape with my hands. And then I was like, like, uh, <laughs> like I didn't know how to like, <laughs> I didn't know how to tell her. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, whoa. <laughs> so that was yeah. pretty wild, man. Yeah. That was pretty wild. I'll, dude, so here's a story. So I heard this story when I first started comedy. So there was a guy he, who was a headliner, right? And he said, well, I was doing a show somewhere. I don't even know where, maybe like Rochester or something or Texas. And... He said, after the show, some hot girl came like beeline for me after the show. Because, you know, like at Funny Bones and stuff, you do the show, then you kind of go to the bar. Yeah. You know, and so you migrate, especially when like you're just coming up. It's like where you go to like show your feathers, and, see, and, see, sell some merch, see if there's any ladies around. And you're at the bar and you're pretending that you're like not noticing who's coming over, but you know. Oh, you're yeah, heavily yeah. noticing. Yeah, yeah. And if nobody comes over, it hurts. It's a lot. So... Anyway, this guy says, I'm at this, I'm at this, this lady comes over and she's like beelining for me and she's like really hot. She's like really coming on to me. And immediately she said, let's, let's go back to your hotel. Oh, she says, let's go back to my place. And the guy's like, man, you know, he's thinking I got to leave in the morning or whatever. I'm, you know, let's go back to my hotel. It's close. So they go back to his hotel and they're kind of kissing and making out a little bit. And like, she's like all over him and she's acting kind of crazy. And she keeps saying, let's go to my place let's go to my place have some drugs at my place so finally uh it gets too much like the lady's just being like too, way too crazy and the guy just kicks her out says look you gotta you gotta leave you know like this is just i don't know what's going on you gotta leave so when she's leaving out of the hotel she sees the feature that was working there right i guess he's coming in you know doing whatever he's been doing eating hot dogs so <laughs> she runs into him she says hey that guy just kicked me out. 
do you want to come back to my place? And the feature's like, yeah, oh, well, yeah. Yeah. you know, this is better than the four hot dogs I just ate, right? <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> next thing you know, they're in a taxi. They get dropped off. It's like about a 15, 20 minute drive. It's kind of like out into the burbs, you know, out mm-hmm. into the woods. They go into the house. Um, they lay, they like, she like takes him into this room, kind of takes his clothes off and stuff. Um, and they do some pills. They do some type of a drug, right? And then she like handcuffs him to the bed and starts giving him a blow job. Well, uh, she passes out in the middle of the blow job. No. So he doesn't know what to do. He's handcuffed to the bed, right? He's like, what am I even going to do? This is before cell phone. So he's like, holy shit, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't even call 911. Some headlights come across the house, like somebody pulling into the driveway. Oh, no. So he hears the front door open. A man comes. An older man comes, looks in the room, sees him there, comes in, picks the girl up, takes her out of there, then goes into the kitchen, like makes himself something to eat, right? The whole time, this dude's freaking the fuck out, right? Losing his mind. He Then the guy comes back into the room and says, this is what he, this is what he said. He goes, um, that's my daughter, right? Oh, no, 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 no. And, uh, and I never want you to come over here again, right? Then give the dude a blowjob, bro. The guy did? The dad. Give the dude a blowjob right there on his penis, bro. And then, then this is the crazy part, uh, took him, drove him to a payphone and dropped him off. And the dude called the headliner, said, hey, man, I need you to get in a taxi or something and come get me. I need some help. And so he got in a taxi to go get him, and that's where he was. I and mean, that's the story he told him when he got in. Let me tell you something. First of all, I mean, that dude takes his job as a parent a little too seriously. You don't get a pick up where she like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's true. She, it's not an IOU. Like, you, you know, yeah. she's, he's no, not this is, where you, <laughs> this is where you use a spanking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have to pick up the blowjob for your daughter, bro. If, was he like, oh, what were you doing? Blowjob. All right. It's like, <laughs> it, it seems like, you know what I mean? That's probably didn't need to. That's the gnarliest story I've ever heard. Yeah, bro. but let me ask. And my second question is, man, I, why is this dude getting hard for da- for dad? Like, that seems like. It could have been out of fear. Fear hard. A fear hard? A fear boner? I think. Can you get erections out of fear? Will you look that up, please, Sean? I'm sure. Some people love that. Do you know that there's a whole uh, porn site where people like to masturbate but they, they use tears as lubricant oh my god that is like the to me that's a different <laughs> let's like it's recycling but it's yeah, too much <laughs> yeah it is i like it it's environmentally i like it but like here we go an individual who has a condition is a phallophobe the term is derived from the word phallow in greek meaning penis and at times denoting masculinity dude couple with the suffix phobia so you said penis there was a guy who played baseball against us when I was growing up. His last name was P E N N I S. Oh wow, Penis. But not in high school. Your name wasn't Penis. No, dude. No. <laughs> That's it's the a worst. tough. Yeah, man. I also had a kid in my high school named Brian O'Brien, and when he used to walk down the hallway, we'd go Brian, O'Brien, <laughs> and he was like "fuck you," and we'd go Brian, oh Brian. We had a Neil McNeil. I was like, your parents just like are not. They don't like you or like... Yeah, that's too much. You can't name your kid Neil McNeil. Yeah. Sometimes... Neil McNeil, yeah, that's too much. Danny Danny. We had a guy named Danny Danny in our town. We had... We had... um, uh, a couple, their names were Jerry and Dolly Jolly. Ooh, yeah, yeah. But some families, they like that Ronnie <laughs> yeah, name, yeah. you know? Where they name all their kids like a J. Oh, yeah, we had one. We had Ronnie, uh, Ronnie, Donnie, Johnny, Lonnie... And uh, wait, Ronnie Bungie, Bonnie? Bonnie? No, it was all men. Ronnie, Donnie, Lonnie, Johnny, and Tommy. No, it had N N I E, and it was not supposed to be. Oh yeah, like a made up name, Bronnie. Yeah, something like, like that. Yeah, like Sonny or yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're like that last one. You could tell who was born last. You're like we ran out of. Yeah, like you, oh, that last one's a risk. You know when um, you know I got grandkids, right? 
And so when my oldest son was like, you have to pick your grandparent name. Damn, you got grandkids, bro? I got four grandkids, bro. What? You didn't know that? We must protect this house, bro. I can't believe you had four grandchildren. My oldest son is 28, man. You know. I didn't know that. You know, he just, he had to, he got medically, he got med boarded out of the army in December. Like he's just medically, he can't do it anymore. Um, and so, but he's been living in Fort Hood in Texas. He's moving here. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the grandkids will be here? Uh, he and his wife are divorced, so we'll see them some. But when he called and asked me, he was like, man, what do you want your grandparent, your grandfather name to be? I said, can you give me to tomorrow? And he said, yeah. Nice. Good call. So you choose immediately. Well, I need to think it out, yeah. you know? And so Beth went with uh, BB. Oh, that's cute. Because both of us were like, if somebody calls me grandpa at the park, I'm not looking. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, totally. I can't go with grandpa. Yeah. So it's like if somebody yells faggot. You yeah, know? you're, yeah, you're, you just you're, stay focused. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? Don't turn. Just stay in um, your lane, bro. It ain't about you. But when, so he, okay, he calls the next day and Beth goes, I'm going to go with BB. That was my great grandmother's name. And obviously her name is Beth and easy for the kids to pronounce BB. So my son goes, What do you want? your grandfather named to be and i said uh, lebron and Ooh. he went what and i go how cool is it to go to bb in the bronze house <laughs> yeah bb in the bronze house sounds like a place sounds like a cartoon yeah i want to be and plus i just wanted to be at a park and hear a kid go lebron <laughs> yeah. because you know everybody's gonna be like get the you know what i mean and to have me run up and so he said to me he was like you can't i'm not letting you do that i was like and he asked me he said is everything a joke with you i was like yeah, are you new? Like, you've been in this family for... <laughs> you thought I was going to pick, like, Papa or some shit like that? Like, What would be a secondary one, though? JJ's JJ kind of cute. I want JoJo. JoJo's good. We're BB and JoJo. Oh, I like that. Yeah, we're like an old jazz band. die in a plane crash, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Or somebody chokes on a sandwich, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it also kind of sounds like a sandwich, the BB and JoJo sandwich. Yeah, I like that. I like BB JoJo. Do you see, what's the uh, thing that happened in uh, Texas with that governor? Did you see that? The mayor wrote that note. To Texas mayor tells residents, can you zoom in? There you go. Thank you. Uh, let me see. By Tuesday morning, the residents of Colorado City, Texas, were getting anxious. More than 24 hours had passed since a deadly Arctic blast knocked out power across the state. Residents turned to a community Facebook group to ask whether the small town planned to open warming shelters while others wondered if... Firefighters could do their job without water. Colorado's mayor chimed in. Um, less than comforting message. He said, no one owes you or your family anything. Mayor Tim Boyd wrote, I'm sick and tired of people looking for a damn handout. What? Uh, that the lazy residents find their own ways of procuring water and electricity immediately drew backlash. Later on Tuesday, Boyd announced his resignation and admitted he could have used better words. How do you p procure electricity? Like what? Right, okay. Uh, highlight how one of the worst winter storms in decades is testing the limits of the embrace of self-sufficiency and rugged individualism in Texas. So it's a good question, man. Like, I don't know. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, Sean, will you grab me an extra water by chance? Thanks, man. Um, how would you do survival? Well, I was thinking about this the other day. So I'm talking to my friend in, in Louisiana, and he said, oh, there's rolling blackouts, so s some friends are coming over tonight because we have power tonight. Right. I said, okay, that's interesting. So it made me think like, what if the power company, I'll take the death. So, thanks brother. So what if the power company, like like the power company is not a guarantee for it. Like it's a, it's part of society that we've gotten to. We're lucky enough to have yeah. like this thing, this structure, you know? But yeah, like what if it went out? Like, so I don't know where this mayor was coming from. I mean, that's probably certainly not the best way to word things if you're the leader, but I mean, if it's people sitting in a home, they're freezing to death. Yeah. And it's, you know, at some point you have to start a fire for yourself or you have to go to somebody's house that like you have to also take action. True. But you don't want your leader to be like every man for himself. That's basically not the message. You know what I mean? But that's a great point. You know, your leader is supposed to be your leader. Let right. everybody else panic. But if you're panicking, it's it's over, you know, I, but it's one thing to tell people to get water because there's snow outside. So, you know. There's moisture. You can figure that out. Procure your own electricity. <laughs> Look. I mean, I wouldn't even, if 
I w- first of all, I'm going to have to Google procure. I don't know exactly what it means. I think I do. I think it's how you treat ham. But go back, <laughs> yeah. get that back open. <laughs> yeah, you man. Go, go back to the, yeah. Uh, at least 10 deaths in Texas have been linked to the winter storm since Monday, according to the Houston Chronicle. So, yeah, I mean, it's wild. I think, I think maybe this guy was probably just upset about other stuff and probably attached it to this. Yeah. But if you were going to p- procure your own electricity, what would be your first move? I'd probably get a generator, gas powered generator. Oh. Or I would start burning stuff. I mean, it's tough. That's but you one can't of the things. Burn it outside because the the storm is obviously going to. Oh, that's a good point. But you can't burn it inside either because of the gas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So the heat. That's the thing that I. I don't know exactly how people were doing it unless you had the generator. Right. So, yeah, I think that's a good point. So, I guess maybe they're thinking, yeah, find other people that have generators. I, it's also tough with this kind of article. You don't know if people's cell phones are still working. Yeah. You don't know if the roads are able that people can drive on. Um, I wish they knew or they would say what set this man off. But, yeah, if you're the leader, I think you probably got to find a better way to lead. Yeah, you can't you can't come out and be like, hey, you pussies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> procure some electricity i'm like what well, i don't even know what that means man i don't know how many electricity to google procure yeah, yeah. so you're gonna have to break it down for me a little better yeah but if you're in your house yelling for help but you also have legs at work it's like then that's on you also but i think one of the big issues we have in america today theo is that people have forgotten that two things can be true at the same time yeah Two things can be true at the same time. You know, whether you're talking about this pandemic, where two things can be true at the same time. Do masks cure everything? Nah, they don't. You can still get it if you have a mask. Yeah. But is it possible that they help? Yeah. Right? So there's two things. People right. are saying you're, you're yelling at each other and both of what you and I are saying are the same, are true. You know what I mean? It's possible for two things to be true. This also, y- should you wait to die? No. But- is it up to you to procure electricity? Yeah. Probably not. Not at first, yeah. Do you know sure. what I mean? Like, so I think yeah. it's, po- that's the thing, like, we've we've lost the ability to go, yeah, that can be true. What I'm saying is also true, but that can be true also. Yeah. There's no there's no room for two sets of truths. Right. Which most things have. Yeah. Most things have two sides, and most of the time, both those sides have truth to them. Yeah. That's why people are so... It's so easy to to pick a side now, right? We're so tribal now. It's not that there aren't, we can't find facts. There are too many facts available. Yeah. So I can find a fact that'll back up whatever the fuck I want to tell you is true. I can find a fact online, an article online, a news site online that'll back me up. You know what that does? That makes me seem smart. That gives me a fucking hill to stand on. So I never have to listen to you. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just saw it online. And everybody in your echo chamber says the same thing. So it must be true. But both two things can be true at the same time. Which yeah, that's is what a we're good point, man. Ability to see. Um, they just had this UFC girl that lost her job. Did you see this? This Carano girl. Yeah, man. As a Jew, I think it's not good. Well, yeah. What did you have any thoughts on it, man? Look, I think the equivalent it is a, a complete false equivalency of her what she's making uh, here. Uh, a complete false equivalency. Uh, the fact that she has said some things that upset people. And they're going. They're going after her online. Is not even close to what Jews had to deal with in the forties in Germany. Oh yeah, it's it's not even. It's a. However, th- this is we we have to stop canceling people for s- having different ideas than we have. Yeah. That's it. Be- even if their ideas are wrong, even if their ideas are deemed wrong, yeah, it's like it's gotten to this place where it's like if somebody, because then you end up with a herd of people who will just never say anything. But they're angry all the time. Right. And so it's Nick Cannon to me was the best example. When I heard what he said, I was like, oh, this dude just doesn't get he doesn't it. know yeah he's yeah he's just reading like some bad he watched some bad uh malcolm malcolm yeah, x he, thing. he's regurgitating some some false narratives and i'm not saying malcolm x is bad right. i'm saying he yeah. watched some outtake of farrakhan or yes. something like there's some videos that get passed around even by smart people that i know that i'm like are you seriously the f- sharing this i I, dude, I could not agree with There's you more. There's one that goes around. It's like that. Oh, uh, white people are afraid if black people got in power that they would treat 
white people like they treated black people and i'm like this is insane i haven't seen that one is that a farrakhan one yeah i think it was a farrakhan one but just some of the stuff that like i don't know just like it's just so like I, I don't know. I just, I can't believe some people would share some things that they share, you know? I, I just think, I think this seemed probably, uh, first of all, unnecessary. I think if you feel like you can't be heard, which I think you can't, if you have, if you have like, it's not even, if you're not like almost openly, because they had that silence is violence thing, yeah. like during BLM, like if you're not openly liberal, a lot of times I feel like you definitely get stared at for not making a lot of the same statements, you know? The, um, the, this, here's the thing, man, but like, we, we're making people scared to speak. So you drive people underground. Yeah. And when you drive people underground, what happens is they get angrier and angrier and angrier and angrier. And then it probably erupts in something like this. And then something happens. And then something happens. And for me, like, look, Nick Cannon was the perfect example. When I read it, I'm like, this dude just needs to be, take him to Auschwitz. Take him to the places that can show him exactly what he's not hearing about this history. Right. And and by the way, somebody did, I think Julian Edelman, the dude from the Patriots, Jew, I believe he's the one who took, might have taken Nick Cannon to Auschwitz and, and sat down, introduced him to some rabbis. And the rabbis were like, here's the history of Jews. And Nick Cannon was like, got it. Got it. Right. And um, but we've stopped even allowing that. Julian Edelman goes at Nick Wright on Twitter. No, uh, we've stopped allowing there to be. I've always said the number one way you learn something is by someone really showing you yes. by hand. Yeah. And instead of like people offering to do that now, they uh, they take people's jobs away. They denounce them they make them i don't know they like they, i guess they cancel them like i feel like yeah maybe it's better if someone says i think you don't understand some things dude some people are racist and it's hard to get through there and some people are just ignorant to it and ignorant i don't mean that in that a they're ignorant people yeah, but they're ignorant yes, about this thing yes i don't mean that in a negative way right so to me you, to, you know julian edelman getting in there with nick cannon and nick cannon meeting with rabbis that's education. Right. And so th what that does is when you cancel him, you make him angry. He hates Jews more. That's, it's their fault I lost my job. Right. And he perpetuates it. And instead of that, it stops there, hopefully. And so and a guy with a good with a loud microphone can be like, hey, this is actually the way it is now. Yeah. There's some people you, I just don't think you reach. Oh, and by the way, from Cool Hand Luke, some people you just can't reach. Oh, yeah. So you, so you get what you had here last week. Yeah. Um, but, but I think, man, that it's all about being able to sit down and talk to people Yeah. because canceling people gets, it doesn't do well, anything. I think good. it's also losing some of its appeal and it's making people really turn away from a lot of Hollywood. Yes. It's like, so wait, these people just cancel anyone who like, and it's not in this instance, you know, I mean, this is, I mean, you know, it's like some of this seems pretty intense, but she must've felt for a long time. Like she can't say anything yes. or she can't speak. Um, uh, look, I don't agree with a lot of the things that she's posted and I don't think any of them mean that she should have been canceled off that show. Yeah. I, I just don't think that that's the right message to send. Again, when you're pushing a group of people underground because they think differently than you, that is dangerous. That's how you have uprisings. That's how you get a bunch of angry people fighting back because whether it's true or not, look, man, it's perception. Your perception of how things is, are is your reality. Right. Whether it is reality or not, right? right? So if you have, say, two million people who feel like they're being persecuted, whether they are or they aren't, and being pushed under the ground, where they are or they aren't, it's going to bubble up. There's no way for it not to. Yeah. And so I just feel like we're going about this in the wrong way a lot of times. There's some people who do deserve to get canceled. Oh, yeah. I think there's some people who yeah. are... Yeah. There's people who... You know, there's people all over the place that probably deserve... Uh, Probably is definitely some sort of some sort of reprimanding, yes. some sort of real yes action against them, you know. Um, but it is it's definitely like it's become a place. A lot of social media has become a place where you can't. It's not even like it's like they group everybody. I feel like there's a lot of grouping of white and poor white people that um, they're all racist or they're mm -hmm. all this way or they're all dumb or they're all ignorant. And it's like. Man, it's so hard to be poor and white. Like, don't you understand? Like, 
I think it's hard to be poor, dude. In anything. But yeah. why does one color of poor get treated differently by the media than another color does? Man, that just baffles me sometimes. Well, I just think that and i grew up poor too man like we grew up with no car and you know um i remember walking to school and we just rode our bikes and we had to borrow a car to go grocery shopping and you know um i wore hand-me-downs because i had three older brothers i oh, wore damn i wore hand-me-downs until i was like 12 or 13 they started off as overalls and they finished as pants yeah man, man. I, I mean i didn't have like you know what i mean so i get it i just think that it's not that white poor people are treated differently. I just think they're not portrayed at all. Like right. it's the and they haven't been for a while. Visually, either. visually, we're not being asked to feel sorry for or support that community. Yeah, and I I, I don't know the exact reason for it, man. You know, and I I think all media is unfortunately intentionally divisive because I think fear motivates people to do things more than anything else the thing that's going to motivate you to do something the most is for me to get on camera and say hey everybody these people this group of bad people are coming to take something away from you something you already have mm. nothing motivates you to do something than somebody come to take some shit i already have do you mm. know what i mean that'll get you scared guns rights whatever it is that you're coming to get think about this dude yeah think about the mask mm -hmm. and i'm just using this because it's current and and for me guys I'm, I, I fall right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. I wear it because I think, eat, I don't think I'm going to die from Corona, but you know what I don't want? Whatever the fuck those people are having because it sounds terrible. Yeah. Two weeks of that sounds terrible. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, yeah. so, and do I have underlying health issues? I don't think so. But I also know other people that do, and the mask is no big deal to me. But here is how crazy people get. So it's all about um, my rights, my rights, my rights, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, man, make sure you put your shoes on before you come in the restaurant. Okay. Hey, man, make sure you put that shirt on before you come in the restaurant. Okay. Why? Because these are old rules. Nothing's being taken away from us. I grew up oh, with that. Oh, I see what you're saying. They're rules that I, you've... Right. I, I grew up with that. So it just seems totally normal to me. But why is it any different? The So what I'm saying is, if you said to me, hey, you can go into a, a restaurant with people wearing masks and no shoes or shoes and no masks, I'd be like, no shoes. Because I'm not going to get a... I'm not getting sick... But it's just an ir irreasonable law rule that was already there that we all already accept. Right. But now that I'm telling you, you got to do it. Now it's my rights. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's because you're taking. Yeah, you're taking, taking something, something away from me that I've always yeah. just taken for granted. Now, obviously, that's not the whole thing, but that is got to do with it. You're yeah. taking it from. That's me. a part of it. Yeah, that's definitely a part of a lot of things. I think. Yeah, it's like you're taking something away from me. It's like. Yeah. Um, Just think of the seatbelt, dude. The seatbelt is something the government makes you do, because they're telling you it's better for you. Yeah. I don't. There's nobody like, hey, fuck you and your seatbelts. Yeah. <laughs> do you know? What I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I that can't. They can't make me wear a seatbelt. Well, yeah, they can. Yeah. And you've just accepted it. Yeah. It's just different, man. When you start to get things changed or taken from you that you feel like you should have a choice over, it's it it'll fuck with you as an adult. Yeah, it does, I think. And especially as you're in as you become an adult, because those are things you're used to. Yeah. It's just like yeah, and then you start to feel like if I lose this and it's gonna be other things, and when does this kind of stop? A hundred percent. Um a hundred percent. Yeah, it's interesting with the mass thing, man. It's really interesting. I think the tough part for me sometimes is when I have to be like in a doctor's office or in a place where you have to keep it on the whole time. And then it's like it starts to be like you lose the ability to you don't even feel human a lot of times. Yep. You just like you're stuck in this thing and they're stuck in that thing. And you're just kind of getting done whatever business you need to get done. 100%. And there's no value in like uh, being like a human anymore. And then I think you attach that if you then attach that to the fact that there is um you know that that the government is mandating it and that like you know it's uh instead of just letting the the disease pass through like herd immunity type of thing mm -hmm. they're like trying to like mandate everyone's movements and everything it's scary for some people when the government starts to step in and tell you what you should or shouldn't do my whole thing with this and basically Whatever you want to use, whatever example, climate change or anything, right? I'm not very smart. So yeah. what I do is I go, okay, 
what do the majority of smart people say? If the majority of smart people were like, hey, if the majority of doctors said, hey, don't, don't wear the mask. I'd be like, yeah, everybody don't wear the mask. And some say don't wear the mask, but to the doctors that I've spoken to, the majority of them are like, yeah, just wear the mask. It's probably easier. So I'm just listening to what the majority of people who are smarter than me think. Right. Well, I'm going to tell you right out. You know what I know about the disease? Not nothing. I don't yeah, know same. shit about it. I just know the same articles that you've read. Yeah. So I just ask people who are smarter than me and that's all I can do because I'm not that fucking smart. So when I hear people like, you know you, what it is, <laughs> dude, come on, man. Like you, you, you know true. what I mean? Like, it's, it's you, tough to like yeah you have mustard on your face dude you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> it's tough to you know kind of I mean? get to that level and it's also like we're at an age where we are not like susceptible we're not like the primary candidates of yeah. people that are going to get injured or something um i do think it's crazy sometimes how every place it's like lock up the gram it's like put old people on the side and i think uh, open things up and let people live their lives it's crazy to me how a place like tennessee will be open and a place like los angeles will be closed i know there's a lot more people in los angeles yeah but it's still not like it's rampant in tennessee Dude, you know i think the problem has been we're all we're all you know you go back to it if I, we go back to what we're talking about with the kids if we all consider us kids right consistency there's never been a consistent message. Yeah. Which has sowed basic distrust into now every but since there's never been a consistent message and it's never been consistent in the places in the country, everybody's like, well, fuck nobody knows shit. <laughs> so I'm coming up with my own idea, you know? And at this point, we're too far in to shut it down again. Oh, I agree with that. Do you know what I mean? We're too, I agree with if that. If it was gonna happen, it everybody should have been put their big boy pants on for those first two months. But after the first two months, it's out there. But I feel like the first two weeks, everybody was locked up. You know, maybe they weren't. I mean, what? If, if, maybe they weren't. I don't know. You know what's interesting, man, for me? It and definitely feels like to me that things should be open and we should keep real good care of our senior citizens, give them some money so that they're able to take care of themselves. Yeah. And let everybody else go back to work, man. That's what it feels like to me. I, um, I talked to my dad. Can I tell you what my dad said? Yeah. He's 83. And, um, this was a couple months ago and I was, and he's, you know, my dad is a, my dad is the most honest, moral, ethical dude. And, um, but I asked him, I go, so, uh, what do you think about Maybe we should just start the economy. And I'm thinking about maybe hitting the road a little bit. I just need, I can't not work dad. I just, I can't go another year with not working. And I could hear him just steaming. And I was like, what's going on? And he said, well, let me ask you something. Have I lived my life pretty well? And I go, yeah. And he goes, I raised my kids and I'm definitely not at the beginning of my life. Is that right? And I said, yeah. And he goes, so I, because you can't figure out your shit, I have to live the rest of my life indoors. Is that what you're telling me? I don't deserve the respect. Like I haven't lived my life. I didn't, the rest of people my age, we didn't build this country for you guys that we have to live our last years indoors because you can't figure out how not to go to a fucking bar on a Friday. And I was like, and I said, I, I completely understand that. I go, but what about the small business dude in New Jersey who's been shut down for seven months? And he goes, no, I get that. He said, but you can't just open it up wide. We got to be smarter. He said, because I don't want to die in my house. Yeah. And I was like, I, and I couldn't argue. Remember how we were talking about two things can be true at the same time? Yeah. I couldn't argue with that. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah, no, you, it's tough to, yeah. What are you going to say to that man? So like, you're not, it, his life is his real, his, is his reality and it makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, I'm with you. Like, we just got to figure out a way. You can still be smart. You know, those 27 man orgies, maybe stop. There's been a couple of those. You see really? people getting busted. All men? Oh, dude, there was man. one twenty-five man. This dude, 25, a polit dude. a twenty-five dude who didn't show up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yo, a twenty-five dude orgy. Playing that's darts, a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of dicks to worry about, man. Oh, that's this one. This guy got caught sneaking out of the back. Oh, definitely he did. He got caught sneaking out of the back of a twenty-five dude orgy because he's an anti-LGBTQ politician from Hungary, but he got. He got he, so he's anti LGBTQ and he got busted and that's always how they do it. Yeah, coming out at twenty five guys. First I of hate all, guys, where's some dicks? Where? Yeah. How do you pick your twenty five? 
You know what I mean? Like, how do you pick? And, and is 25 the There's limit? There's two of them right there in the distance right there. A couple yeah. Of <laughs> <you know? laughs> Yosef Zai Zaja. Yeah, this dude. Damn, now that's a lot of men are, le- you know, without ladies out there, we got to at least let the ladies loose, man. Dude, this, this is- look at this guy. It looks like if I'm picturing 25 dudes who look exactly <sighs> like oh. that dude right there. You know what I mean? Just, oh, man. Just playing fucking booty darts this son. dude this dude Praise when he God. has sex he he his face gets sweaty <laughs> oh, yeah. there's no doubt this dude's face gets sweaty i bet he keeps his shirt on during <laughs> sex the whole time that white t-shirt yeah, yeah oh, i bet he keeps his watch on <laughs> yeah. oh yeah watch what time is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> time for me to keep fucking <laughs> yeah but i think he goes when he goes sex, he goes glasses off, but he puts one monocle in. Yeah. Huh? Monocle, sweaty face, I white t shirt, and socks. Yeah, he should definitely at least sell merch. I <laughs> think like it. How do you fucking. It, that's the problem, bro. If you were an elected official and you get busted in a sex crime, sell merch. Yeah, you got to merch it out, man. How are y'all not selling merch? I mean, that that seems like, I mean, what's the t-shirt you wear and co- jumping out of a 25 dude yeah, huh? orgy? Yeah, it's just like a bit, a picture of you like leaving a house and it's like 20, 25 sets of eyes and one of the, peeking out one of the windows. Or how about I went to a 25 man orgy and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the one to do it. All right, you win the shirt idea. Yeah. Let's bring up another news article. What else do we have? And then we'll finish up here, man. Uh, let's go with that uh, Logan Paul. What's he doing? Now, did what? he sell his home, does it say? What does it say here? Can you zoom in a little? Thank you, brother. The pandemic has fueled a dramatic new wave of high-profile migration, sending tech workers to Texas, Wall Street types to Florida, and YouTube provocateur Logan Paul to uh, Puerto Rico. Paul, an influence entertainer, told his 2.8 million YouTube subscribers Tuesday he was leaving Los Angeles and moving to the heaven on earth of Dorado, so it, to me, this is a community about 30 minutes west of San Juan has become a favorite spot of wealthy mainlanders. To me, uh, this sounds like he did ayahuasca. And just took off and went to Puerto and Rico? now he's making a choice. Yeah, now. Yeah. Um, I, I got to tell you, you know, um, I, first of all, love Puerto Rico. It's a beautiful place. But I understand they have some weather issues down there where you might not want to build a f- super expensive home. Yeah. Because the hurricanes whip through there pretty good. However, um, you know, well, it's you a said, beautiful spot. Oh, yeah. Puerto Rico is beautiful, man. They got that Three Kings Day, Tres Reyes. Tres Reyes. Which is also a gang uh, uh, in part of America. But it's crazy here in California paying taxes and for what, Paul said on his show, Impulsive. The streets are not fixed. Homeless people everywhere. A Darth. Oh, I'm surprised you knew that word, but I respect that, Logan. Well done. A Darth of unemployment, COVID not handled. I don't love it. Yeah, man, there's a lot of things about California that lead it to, that I think have led to some of its decline in some of our minds. I mean, for me, number one was definitely taxes. Yeah. I just didn't feel like paying taxes to uh, just such a a place that, it, to me, it just becomes so... Just too far lopsided. Just I agree. Out for blood, not as creative as it as I felt like it maybe once was. Um, too much nepotism. I feel like not enough chances for the regular person that's moving there. Um, and I could be wrong. I I could be totally wrong. But those are just thoughts that have been in my head. And no, I'm not saying they're accurate. For me, uh, the taxes. I was like, I I didn't mind paying the taxes. When I knew what my taxes were going towards, right? Why am I paying taxes and stepping over homeless people wherever? Not it's not just in one part of the city now. Everywhere. Why am I? Why am that I? They ain't meeting t- up. Yeah, man. They're making community. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why am I paying taxes and it's so dirty? Do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm paying this money, it's then, a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money. Then. What am I getting from it? And I wasn't getting anything. And not only that, man, honestly, it's like I said, and I should have left a couple years ago. I never felt like I was really part of the cool kids. And I felt like I feel so much more creative and relaxed here. Mm. 
because I don't feel like com- competing all the time. Oh yeah, I'm not waking up wondering what other people are doing. Or That's a great point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that part of my day is gone. It's gone. like I'm just a little creative, and maybe I can spend some time taking care of myself. Yeah. Um, Did you wake up also and worry about what other people were doing and what other people? I just found like I'm. I'm like, why am I in my own head? competing with these people yeah we're not competing do you know what i mean right i haven't done that here yeah i think uh i think well i still still have my apartment there so it's like i and i'll probably go back and spend some time there especially as the summer comes back and um and it's a nice you know to get to the beach and also to do do podcasting and stuff like that but it's nice to not have it just never felt like it always felt like work. It felt like the second I got off the plane, I was at the office. I agree. It just like, man, I'm at this. And then if I was if I was home for two weeks, I'm at I'm just in an office for two weeks. Whether I'm sleeping, I'm at the in my bed at home or anywhere I'm, just always like this never ending buzz of uh, uh of office stuff. And then I, I I really feel like some of the creativity there has they've it's been so separated it's like so second third fourth generation just people getting opportunities on their name and stuff Mm -hmm. that they've lost sight of like a lot of the and not only lost sight but kind of separated themselves from a lot of the places in america where a lot of good storytelling comes from and like um you know and a lot of creativity like creativity is kind of a group process you know and when you when you really minimalize yourself to very you know kind of narrow lanes of okay thought i think and i'm not saying if they're right or wrong but it it very much leaves you in this place where you can't really tell a joke if there's no if there's not a wall to bounce it off of Mm -hmm. sometimes and it's like they just have created this place where i don't even you see some of these new comedy shows and comedy specials and it's like there's not even any jokes in it it's not comedy no, it's not, it's, it's not comedy. It's crazy. And I don't know how they get out of that. How they get out of this like spiral of, oh, you're worse than I am. You're, you messed up. You messed up. Yeah. You messed up. You're bad. You, you, you know, it's, it, I, I think podcast has helped stand up more than anything. Yeah. Because oh, it, no doubt. It's allowed. Praise God, man. Pe- right. Because people have gotten used to. Remember when people used to talk to us about jokes per minute? We gotta be yeah. well, there's not enough jokes. Give me 70 per, jokes per minute. Yeah, man. there's not enough jokes per minute in that story. You're like, yeah. oh, but I'm telling a story. Like it's gotta be so I f- really feel like it has helped. But I think what started happening in LA, for me anyways, is that everybody kind of looked at Joe or Segura or you or Bert, and it 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 um the path to success started to become very repetitious, very copycat. And so I think a lot of the creativity, had, it's like, you know, a couple of years ago, maybe 10 years ago, everybody who left New York comedy scene sounded like a tell. Everybody had his cadence. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Not because they were ripping it off, but he- He was that big of an influence. Right. And so I think there's so much of the influence from the top that creatively, a lot of the stuff that's coming out is starting to look the same. Mm. We haven't had that next wave of- who's doing something different interesting you know what i mean so right and i wonder if there's and maybe something different does come out of a lot of this it usually always does yeah i think so i think right you're right um josh wolf he's got a new special on march 4th streaming it live one take dude dang that's risky bro but it's gonna live for a week uh so if you get if you can't watch it on thursday march 4th uh, to live for a week on that link mm-hmm. it's only ten dollars we're trying to we're it's a trying great to, deal yeah and we're upsetting the apple cart here everybody i like it i like somebody changing the game and if this goes well and who knows we could all be doing this so that's Think, exciting to yeah hear man and you get to set your own price it lives for as long as you want it to live and then you own the material so yeah. you get to do what you want to do. Oh, I feel you, man. I, I feel you, man. I have a special with Netflix, but then after that, I think I would. I think this might be the future, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to see you, uh, you know, Neil Armstrong and out there, man. Yeah, comedianjoshwolf.com, Everybody, don't pay no attention to that t- picture. I'm gonna have to get a new one. <laughs> yeah. <We'll> see- <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. We'll see you guys, All man. Right, man. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be. Cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this piece of mind I found. I can feel it in my bones, but it's gonna take a little 
time For me to set that parking brake And let myself all wind Damn, they're gone, I guess.